cut that shit out? Louis C.K. has just hey, entered the man. studio. So funny. Yeah, you cut it out, and then it never looked okay. good. The headliner inside the car would all start falling down. Oh, of course. It would come out from the flange because it was never tight enough. It was never watertight. How'd you cut the hole? With a sawzall. You had to have that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got you know, you to have your equipment. You had to have your tools to you put in your, your own tools. sunroof. Oh, yeah. A lot of that good shit, though. Fucking Louie, man. Not, you're, like, really famous now. Yeah, no. I know. When he you're, walked you're in, like, I'm really <laughs> famous. I'm like, holy I, I was shit. A I, got, a little I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous. <laughs> I was a little like, ah, oh, shit. We've had Louie on so many times, but now I'm looking at him differently. Like, God, he's really That's famous. That's that Louis C.K. guy. No. I, I watch his show. and He does a Leno show, and then that uh, clip goes viral. And no. holy shit, you're famous. Crazy. My I'm God. not Funny famous. or die loves you. I'm not famous. <laughs> I'm not. You're really nah, famous. Nah, you're pretty fucking famous. Holy shit, you're famous. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're, we won't jinx it for you, but yeah. yeah. You I'm surprised you're even here. You're yeah. that famous. <laughs> you're not supposed to do the show anymore. You're that famous. <laughs> it's so funny how people don't ever see the cycle coming. You know what I mean? Oh, the up and down. Yeah, I mean, I see it. I always, I see it already. Are you I already see of, the horizon. Do you see the coming? horizon? Yeah. Do you see the 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 the, the dip? Yeah, the not sun <laughs> rising on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I already see it. Uh, Louis, I saw you at Carnegie Hall. I didn't want to bother mm. you after the show. Oh yeah. Fucking standing ovation. And that I, was I'm, pretty fun, man. But it's just you. Dressed mm -hmm. like shit in a stool, yes. getting a standing ovation. I'm like, shouldn't there be an orchestra or something to get a standing ovation? Yes. No, I'm wearing the same right now. This right. is the clothes I wore. Yeah, you didn't dress up for Carnegie Hall. No, I Why pulled this you? shit on to be on the radio. <laughs> I wore the same thing for Carnegie Hall. I was amazed. No, I, I'm like, that's why Louis is as, as good as he, he is because he doesn't. He's not dressed he up for suits, Carnegie right? Hall. You know, you never, never, never. And the thing is, uh, uh, when I play, I play rooms that side like this. This uh, the tour I just finished was all rooms that size wow. or bigger. Jesus. In Chicago, I did the Chicago Theater. We we did two. I did two shows there. Wow! But, How big uh, is that? That's like thirty six hundred wow. seats. So it was like seven thousand people in one night, and it was the perfect way to get ready for Carnegie Hall. Is that by the time I got there, I'm like, well, I've been doing this right, yeah, you know, kind of room. But but nothing prepares you for that place because. Uh, Chicago theater, it's enormous, it's beautiful, but it's in the middle of shit Chicago, and uh, the ba the dressing room is peeling paint, and, you know, Joey Ramone signed the coffee uh, yeah, table, yeah, <laughs> you know, one of those. whatever, which I love, that's what I love, but you go to Carnegie Hall, and they, they show you into the maestro suite, which has this gold plaque on it, and Holy this shit. guy bows as you walk through the fucking door and it's like oh my god there's a whole other and you're i mean if you know like if yo-yo ma plays there he doesn't go to the maestro suite he play goes to the fucking musician room right right you're, you're the, the maestro, maestro suite. yeah you're, i'm you're the main the, guy you're the george guy. gershwin talking <laughs> <and> got <laughs> blown in there right. <laughs> and uh so yeah it's a whole other level it really it was it was such a great show and i want to give props to ted alexandro is he uh doing all your I hired him for the tour. No, uh, he did. I toured with him some last year, and this year I worked with Todd Glass a lot and some other right. guys. But uh, I saw I, Ted. I just want to give him props. He was he's really, a funny dude, man. He was, well, and he, he didn't did know. I hired him the day before to do Carnegie. Yeah, what an asshole. I, I know. <laughs> what an asshole. I couldn't you are. decide who to open for me, and I figured I can get anybody. But then I got close, and I'm like, no, folks aren't really actually available. Right. And I wrote. I, and I wrote Ted. I love Ted. I just. Uh, I just couldn't decide. Mm. And then I wrote him the day before and said, I need you at 8 o'clock tomorrow at 57th Street and 6th Avenue. That's all I said to him. And he, smart, he looked I'm, it up. I'm playing the coffee shop? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, he's really, uh, he, it was funny because he, he just wrote back, okay. And that was it. Like, he knew what it was. He just went, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's shitting his pants as yeah, he's exactly. writing, okay. But he wore a suit. And his yeah, dad came. It was yeah, great to have that Ted got. Do you feel bad not having a suit? Or you? I wear that sometimes, and I'm like, uh, it doesn't feel right. But you just do it because you like. Oh, no, I think I'm supposed you to. Feel obligated. Well, I I uh, I want to wear suits. I wish I could wear a suit. Like the image in my head, right. of being on stage in a suit and tie. That's it's really cool. That's class. Yeah, that's class. It's all class. class. But then when I wear one, I feel just weird, and my shirt starts coming out of my pants, and I don't... <laughs> wear a t-shirt under it. Like, I don't wear a tie. I can't wear a tie. It's too fucking restrictive. Yeah. Honestly, it works for low. It really just, I, I it like, just works. I wish I could dress up. I just don't... I don't... 
I don't pull it off, and I, I wish I, I did. I, th I think your your act and your personality is more conducive to just casual just the, wear. Yeah, last time I did the Tonight yeah. Show, I brought a suit and tie, and I put it on. It said, fuck this. And then the last second... Wow, really? I was like fucking what's his name in uh, in cold blood pulling off my you know having to pee before I get hung. <laughs> I, just, I ripped everything off and ran out. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, man. I can't. I can't do it. You know, first time I did Letterman, I wore a suit, and uh, I remember uh, Mitch. What's his name? The comedian here in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. He came up to me and said, why would you wear a suit? You don't wear suits. And I was like, well, I, it's a respect for the institution. It, to me, doing Letterman was like graduating from something. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's <laughs> phony. If you ever, if I did Letterman, I, I wear sneakers and jeans. I'm like, well, go ahead. I don't know. I wanted to wear a suit. <laughs> yeah. like, well, it just it isn't you. And I'm like, well. And then he did Letterman. He wore a fucking suit. He did. <laughs> yeah. What a downer, though. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm yeah. trying to enjoy my I love moment. when people have these phony exactly. rebellions. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow, you and um, Anne Frank really... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I gotta ask you about the TV show. Where are we mm -hmm. at? The first season was a huge hit. Yeah, it did really great. I mean, you know, yeah. only 14 people watch those things but uh no, man. But it was well liked by all, all four everybody did you that, do, yeah that was one you of did those numbers didn't you fucking yeah great, we did well man. for cable yeah we did great fx is perfect place for you uh, it's great. i wouldn't want more people to have access to the show honestly <laughs> yeah, i really so wouldn't start pitching yeah like we uh we are moving we're doing a second season and we're moving to 10 30 uh okay. from 11 just inching back a half an oh, hour oh Oh, At first, sneaking. they said, let's go to 10. That's what they're, they're going to... 10 is technically kind of primetime television. Yeah. So they're going to move it to 10. And because uh, the show, the numbers for the show are strong enough to move it to 10. That's what they told wow. me. Uh, to then grow it. And then they said, we're doing 1030. I'm like, what happened to 10? They said, well, no, there's, we can't. Uh, your show can't. You, they, uh, they said, believe me, you're better off. Just well, you don't want them fucking with it. You don't want no, them moving right. it to 10 and then going, all right, well, you can't do this, this, you can't do that. Yeah, 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 exactly yeah. Right. Freedom, dude. I'm exactly, if I was on any other network uh, at any other time period, I would not be able to do this. Yeah. Show the no, way it is. Because no. the advertisers wouldn't buy it. He showed the, uh, the guy at the, the network showed it to advertisers that buy 10 p.m. time, which is far more expensive than 10, yeah, right. 10 30 time. Fuck. And uh, they were like, we're not, what are you what crazy? Are you, you're insane. <laughs> When's the second no season way. hit? It's, so, it's going to be a while. The guy fucks a hole in a wall <laughs> and, and talks about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Puts his penis in the hole. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> that dentist scene that he did was. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> That wow. fucking that was hysterical. Your face the was inferred mouth mouth fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I woke up from the dentist once and thought I, I feel you, like you he fucked my, like right. <laughs> fucked my mouth. Right. I assumed it yeah. was based on something low. No, that whole thing is true. It is that dentist thing. I I one did took nitrous and lots of drugs and I went in my mind to the desert. Wow. Met Bin Laden and ta talked him out of <laughs> terrorism. Talked him out of I it, seriously yeah. had that experience so viscerally. That when I came out of it and then out of the nitrous, I was like, "That, that's the realest hallucination or dream that, I've ever had." That really happened. Yeah, <laughs> Damn. exactly. The uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais was great on it too. Yeah, he's Playing awesome. Fucking, and your reaction to him when he would just fuck his with finger you. in my ass. And, yeah, no, and, he's great. And then you, he would get you again, and you'd get mad at him. Yes, <laughs> it's fucking yeah. brilliant. Well, no, it was a fun. When's thing the to second do. season gonna hit? It's a few more months. June. I'm sure. I start June, shooting okay. in a couple of weeks. Great. I already shot the stand up for it. I did some stand up. Uh, I did a show in Atlanta, and we shot the stand up. Oh, you're changing uh, the venue? Yeah, I'm, I'm still. I also did the Comedy Cellar, right. but I like the. I mean, I do more concerts now than I do. Right. That I did then. So. I just wanted to use the, the house. Yeah, right on. So man. sometimes you'll see me in a concert, and I'll probably also shoot at Caroline's again. And you're really famous, dude. You, th <laughs> <laughs> Louis. Something happened where, like, you were all, Louis is a famous guy, but it's something true. happened in the last. It, it was before the show. It started, I think, with almost like the set on Conan, yeah. talking about mm. flying. Something just put you through the fucking roof, though. There's, it was like that that next <clears throat> that put you that one level higher, where it, you are just mainstream famous. It now. might be yeah. the Sarah Palin drunk tweets. It, yeah, that those was, uh, those actually did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Those did a lot. Do you feel like and I took them down? You, but do you, I know. But do you feel like you could still do that, or you're a little worried about what? Uh, uh, well, the no. It is true say. that nobody. I mean, the thing that happens with uh, notoriety is that you, you at first you get you grow because more and more people like you. 
but then you get pushed over this edge where people start becoming aware of you that don't know who you are or mm. and that don't like you and take you <laughs> that's out the of dangerous context, thing about though. it is that and because yeah. i'd love to have only exactly all the people that are like me that like me right, to yeah. know who i am <laughs> that'd be a great world to live in <laughs> and that nobody who doesn't have me as a taste <laughs> does, is aware of me <laughs> And actually, the internet, I think, lets people grow that way. There's people... Yeah. I did... This tour I did, we sold out every city Jeez. easily with no advertising, which means Jesus you make more money because you don't spend that money. Right. But I was in Philadelphia, and I did this show in this huge theater there. I forget what it was called. And uh, my uh, this guy I know came, and he was like, I don't understand. He's a big money guy. Like, he makes... He invests and makes money. And he says, I live in Philly. I never heard of this show. I never heard your coming here wow i don't understand how you sold out <clears throat> and that's because exactly the people that like me know who i am and well, yeah. nobody else and they know knows. where you are and where you're gonna yeah. be and, but as yeah. i'm pushing a little further there's people that don't like my shit that know <laughs> right who i am and that's when shit like saying sarah palin has people coming out of her cunt or whatever it was yeah. that i said <laughs> <laughs> it was a rather Chinese salty people living in her cunt yeah it was a little <laughs> what am I, unnecessary yeah, one of my favorite one of my favorite things called for yeah one, one of my favorite things is when like i get barbaric a barbaric attack <laughs> when i get a tweet from someone going oh boy he's on a plane and yeah. he's drunk and yeah, i go, right, and I go yeah. right to your twitter and i just follow along yeah. my my well, brother. I am definitely like I uh, like a stereotypical Indian with the rum. Something happens. To me. <laughs> Something happens to me. Don't you feel with compelled? rum, coke, and rum? I get riled up. Yeah, and I get a little crazy. You feel compelled to just grab a drink the second you get on a plane? Yeah, no, I don't know it's what that is with reason. me. I'm like Bloody Mary guy. Like the second I get on a plane, I, can I have a Bloody Mary? And, and it's because I never really know or care what time it is. And a Bloody Mary, you could. Have for breakfast. No, that's exactly right. So if it's eight, seven in the morning and mm -hmm. I'm catching a flight or something, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, Bloody Mary. And then you just feel good. You're clinking around your little drink yep. and you're drinking. And then you start tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> no, because tweets. there's something about alcohol and the, the mixture of oxygen on a plane. Yeah, yeah. Is, that's, that is deliberate. It's not the atmosphere. <laughs> The oxygen you 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 uh, breathe on a plane is is mixed by a person. You know sure. what I mean? They decide how much. <laughs> yeah, how much. How much you need. There. If they shut it off, you die. I mean, it's you know that's <laughs> yeah. how that golfer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly. nice to know. So so when you're drinking, the oxygen does. There's it, something it about has, the yeah. mix that I mean, every plane probably has a mandatory mix. I'm sure there isn't a knob that the person can go. Eh, fuck these people. <laughs> like <laughs> tweak it up or down. <laughs> I think it's factory set. Let's go to thirteen percent on the. These fucking assholes. <laughs> they get yeah. a little rambunctious. Let's slow them exactly. down a bit. They can feel like they're on Mount Everest. Yeah, so airplanes are the only place that most human beings share that there is that your oxygen level is is totally regulated. Yeah, because you in this room, I'm sure it's less than. Outside. Yeah. This is a great discussion to have with the Secret Service someday if the wrong tweet is sent out. Yes. No, you don't understand. It's the oxygen was regulated. Combined <laughs> yes. with alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> it was hammered. I was but, reading uh, those and I was like, oh, yeah. Lou. Oh, Lou. No, I. I <laughs> it's got a lot to lose it was now. funny to me the first time I did it. The, it was funny to me that people got worried for me. Like, I started sending them and I immediately got a response. From somebody at FX, a uh, uh, pretty high up executive oh, at FX, shit. wrote and said, uh, "You got to take these down and apologize." I mean, this is within this all. This is the great, amazing shit. thing about today. I'm on an airplane, <laughs> and not only am I communicating with the ground, <laughs> but I am broadcasting to 250,000 people instantly through Twitter, <laughs> and then getting instant. Angry feedback from and receiving it at right? thirty five thousand. All of that feet. is happening at thirty five thousand yeah. feet, and then I'm. You were talking to way more than two hundred fifty thousand because yeah, because everyone was re re yeah, retweeting. Yeah, they're passing it. along to other people. It was funny exactly. the indignation. I don't know this Louis C.K., but I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> some of the comments are very funny. Oh, I've, I've oh got... yeah, no, the the uh, the some people got really angry, oh. and also some. Oh, you will. Get this show that. fucked me up with it. This <laughs> yeah. show got me in trouble. Of course it did. Because the tweets themselves, people just thought were just childish and yeah. pathetic, which they were. Yeah. But somebody hooked it up with a YouTube. Uh, sound video of this show 
where I said stuff about her uh, her kid with Down syndrome. They'll mm-hmm. always rat out. Like, the, yes. the, 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 the fans, you got to realize, people, We're the shut worst up, fans. be cool. You raised a brilliant point cool. with that, though. Show the fuck out sometime. Well, well, you, you said her age, the kid's age, doesn't is not Down syndrome. You, you won't notice the difference at that age because it's so young. I thought it well, was a here's, brilliant point. Here's the thing about it. Because I said, I said, yeah, the point I was making was that she's saying that there's joys and challenges to having a Down syndrome child. She was saying this during the election. Yeah. And at the time, her baby was very, very young, like, you know, less than Downy. a month or something. Right, right? yeah, it was very young. And so who cares if it's a Down syndrome baby? Now, of course, I was doing it on this show, and I'm, it's not a com- it's not a political show. No. So I also said, you know, who cares how many people came out of your retard-making cunt? Like, oh, I, I, right. I salted it up a little. <laughs> I, put, I made it, yeah. I, a little spoonful of sugar is yeah, the way I was looking yeah. at it. That was pepper on a substantial meal that yes. you were serving. <laughs> yes. A little spice. So, but anyway, the, all these, uh, these, like, Breitbart and some big uh, oh, right-wing sites found right. that video and then hooked it up with the tweets and said he hates... Mm-hmm. People with Down syndrome. That's nice. why. That's what? of course I do. That's why I went after her because I just <laughs> fucking hate <laughs> those people. But so, uh, and then I felt. I yeah, I felt like I'm okay. I yeah. I'm not said anything. I'm ashamed. But then I got this fucking email from this guy. Uh. Who Ugh. said, uh, I want to start by saying I hate Sarah Palin. She's a terrible person. But what but. you said about children with Down syndrome is extremely hurtful. And I'm like, first, I mean, I'm thinking, okay, I didn't say anything bad about people with Down syndrome. Right. So I'm nearly deleting the email. And he, then there's a fucking picture of his daughter. And he oh, says, shit. And he says, oh. what you don't understand is that Down syndrome isn't just something that. Uh, that depletes Ooh. a person's learning ability. It's a it's a really difficult thing to cope with in life. And um, a baby with Down syndrome needs surgery often, right after birth, and medication that you can't believe how expensive it is. He says that her birth uh, was such a difficult thing for our family. It destroyed our family. Like, My wife and I broke up real? over the stress of it. Wow. And, uh, and, and, but I, my daughter's the greatest thing in my life. And we, and we, we're all, you know, it's just pure joy, but it's so hard and it's extreme. And he was so respectful that yeah, it was breaking my heart. Yeah. He never said, you filthy piece right. of shit. He just said, you're so wrong. You wouldn't believe it. But it's like, the, you're it, so it, way yeah. off. You're spreading a thing that's really, really harmful. And I felt like such a, Piece of shit. But he was for making it real, An and you're making it fun. <laughs> yeah, like but that guy might. No, no. But I movie, said, though. I said though, the one thing I said that was wrong. I don't like saying things that are just wrong. <laughs> I mean, because it, it's not wrong that she has a retard making cunt. Because that's what <laughs> one came out of there. It's not a nice way of saying it. <laughs> it's not but, medical, but of course no. not. <laughs> <laughs> Your technical jargon. Yeah. Yeah, but, go ahead, Doctor Lou. <laughs> 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 the thing that was wrong to say uh, is that there's no challenges to having a Down syndrome baby. I just didn't know that. And, like, you know, like, we always say reckless shit. Yeah, I don't care. I don't fact check do. my comedy. Sure. No, what, you shouldn't have the to. The goal is no, a laugh. let it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The only thing is that guy, he might have saved, because what he, what he showed you was the passion that people feel about that. And it's like, they may have come at, like, that may have been a very helpful email in the long run. Like, sometimes you underestimate how frustrated people are with something, yeah. and then you hit it, and they come after you, and it's fucking relentless. The best like, thing would have been, like, five minutes later, get another email go, I'm just fucking with you, with a picture of a beautiful daughter, just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. This, this is it's my daughter. A's. I'm just fucking with you. I don't care. I was laughing my balls off. No, and I've gotten angry <laughs> emails before, and I never care. I don't, it's not my lookout. Other people get it. People choose what to get offended by, you yeah. know? Yeah. People get offended by... Uh, you know, I had a funny moment at the Comedy Cellar. I did this joke about 9-11. Oh, um, I don't go for that. Oh, uh, you see? <laughs> <laughs> you see? I was doing a, a story about when I was married. It was really about how being married, you're in trouble all the time. You feel like you're in trouble when yeah, you're married, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, constantly. <laughs> um, I don't get that sense from you. You guys nah, seem like you're okay. Yeah, we're all right, man. Yeah. I wish I you had hit, story, That's because you I hit don't. her, right? Because yeah. if you yeah. hit her, it's not. It's <laughs> yeah. So it goes the other way. What's better than when you go to scratch your eye and they flinch? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> my old relationship, I can, I can relate. Uh, yeah, you, know, yeah, we, you walked around trouble. feeling like you were in trouble. So, yeah. yeah, you're hitting on something. So, yeah, so I was uh, in L.A. And uh, uh, at 6 in the morning, my ho- hotel room phone call, you know, phone rang. My phone rang. And my wife at the time was crying. 
And I was like, what the fuck is this? Oh, Did she no. find a phone sex bill? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she can't talk. And I'm like, what is it? And then she tells me, turn on the TV, and it's both the World Trade Center towers are on fire. And I was like, woo! <laughs> like, that's the only person. Oh shit! That's the only person. Oh damn! To be deeply relieved that it wasn't something else. That two planes yeah, were flown. Something, the world. something wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. That, that, that America yeah. would never feel safe again. <laughs> that's a great show. Um, anyway, I did it. I told that story at the Comedy Cellar, and this guy stood up and just stood up in that little room and said, "That's that's not okay, man. It's not okay." And he wow. walked out. So then I'm upstairs. Talking to Mark Marin, a comedian, yeah, and I said, months. this guy told him the story, and I said, well, you know, I hate people that pick the thing in the show. That's what I'm offended by because I said all kinds of shit in that yeah, show, yeah. and he let it go. But, but that's his sensitivity. So I said, it's really narcissistic of people yeah. to decide what they're going to sure. be offended by. And Mark said, that's how insane it is that you're saying calling that guy a narcissist when your whole that joke is the most narcissist thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. It's only important to that you. you were yeah. Pleased that thousands of people were dead because you weren't in trouble with your fucking wife because you didn't know how to fucking face your wife. Oh, shit. That's really funny. <laughs> Once in a while, you get fucking shit. Like I did a 9/11 joke. It was it was probably a year after, not even, and I was doing something, and it wasn't a knock on 9/11. It was it was like somebody misinterpreting it. But the woman in the it audience. It wasn't a knock on 9/11. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean yeah. to insult yeah, yeah, 9/11. Yeah. Hey. It was a brilliant program. I mean, it's one of the most <laughs> successful. <laughs> Things I've ever seen, but it was one of those things where I, I, they, I knew the person was misinterpreting the point of the joke, mm -hmm. and and she was kind of like saying something, and the woman behind her was looking at me, and she was just shaking her head no, like, like, like don't. don't do this. I started going after, her, and the woman behind her was like, ah, and I just I backed off, and then they told me after like yeah, her husband died, and, and uh, so I was really happy uh, I backed wow. off because yeah. I, I was gonna make it a whole big like thing like that, like you fucking yeah. cunt with the fuck, <laughs> right. you don't mind me right. talking right. about yeah. rape. Right. But once in a while, you back off and you're happy you did. It's like, even though technically, all right, she was being annoying. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're talking to a group of people, and you could never be aware. You can't make you know make people fill out a thing and then Decide do a data report. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why anybody that uh, calls or, or however they get in touch with us and they say something like, you know, I'm a big fan of the show. I've been listening to it for years. But that uh, one when, thing. When you, said, when you said this, and it's like, uh, you listened for years. You know how many fucking people we probably upset over the years that weren't you? You fucking idiot. No, exactly. Yeah. But and a lot also some people get offended just cuz they re they I'm sure there's 911 victims who find that shit funny. There has to be. There has because to be, right. The like a lot of times when we make fun of these things we're just using them as a con in a context. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing I said is about the misery marriage is so Prohibitively constraining. Yes, that a national disaster is good news. It's not so much you, making light of the disaster; problem. it's showing how awful marriage is. It's also yeah. brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people have felt relief at something that wasn't affecting them that was worse for other people. You were just being fucking ugly and naked and honest about it. That's that. Yeah. That's no, the and look, of it. this is the most fucked up thing to say. But if you if you suffered, so you could have stopped the attacks. Then, didn't I could have, <laughs> but I wanted the bit. <laughs> I had inside information. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, God, that bit is so funny, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> if you suffer directly or indirectly from something, you don't own it. You just no, don't. No, you don't. You're right. right. Unless yeah. your name is 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, all of us in here, have, have goofed on things that have directly affected our, our yeah, lives. Sure. Personally mm -hmm. affected our lives, of course. And uh, some of the things people know about, some they don't. Yeah, but you whatever. Know, it's not and, yours. And you just do it. It's not yours. It's not fucking. It's no. it's whatever it is. You put it over the air to make people laugh or think or whatever the fuck <clears throat> we're doing in here. But it's not. You know, I'm not singling out all the people that this will offend. Hey, let me offend some people today with no. this. No, I'm going for the people that it, it no, and again, if you took part in something or something you suffered from something that doesn't give you the right to if it's a thing that happened in the war, especially something that happened to the whole country, you don't get to control who gets to say what about right. it. And by the way, you get to get offended about it. That's my main thing yeah, about yeah. people getting offended. Yeah, you got offended. So that gets to happen. There's been that this is part of living on the earth. But there, okay. there's been there's been this whole thing that's taken in place over the the past few years where people absolutely believe that there is a a right 
to not be to offended. not be to offended. not hear something and and especially if it's over, over airwaves and stuff like that they think that the FCC they can complain yeah. to the FCC and say they were offended by something yep. and absolutely think that the FCC will go hey fuck you I well, you know, I uh, I subscribe to the uh, the thought that uh, laughter really is the best medicine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's straight talking, Jim. Yeah, That's you know. Right. I don't wanna, well, I remember serious, I got guys. an I, I got an email once because of the church, the Catholic Church video that I have on YouTube, where I go to the funny. church and find out that yeah. they completely exist to fuck boys <laughs> yeah. in the ass. Hilarious, that by the way. And, uh, fucking hysterical. And I got it, I got, I've got. i gotten to, num you know, number emails about that, and uh, less than I thought I would. Wow. But it's funny that most people that complain about it, they'll say, G you know, Jesus is Lord and you've offended him, and I'm uh. going to crack your fucking head open, you motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I get that all the time. <laughs> Which is people, really an people odd say little. from a Christian point of view, you've hurt Jesus, yeah. and I'm gonna fucking split your head open, you cunt! Like they, they're so profane that, and so threatening. That forgiveness shit goes out the window. <laughs> no, and, uh, yeah, when, when you, it comes to religion. But but anyway, one guy like. wrote to me and said, oh. my my uncle is a Catholic priest, and you insulted him. And yeah. I wrote him back and I said, no, I did. I don't know your uncle. I, 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 yeah, it's you know, not like I fucking I didn't I insult just, him. No, personally. I made a broad joke about a whole group, and it's yeah. got nothing to do with your uncle. And he wrote back and said, "I know," but and then we wrote back and forth, and we yeah. figured yeah. figured it out. Are you too fagged out? What happened? I don't like yeah, the end of that, that story. Sucks. I got I got to interrupt because uh, we got Ron Perlman outside the studio. He's and he, out at eight fifteen. He only has a few so minutes, so we should get, get him in as well. By the way, as Ron makes his way into the studio, Louis C.K. hilarious will make its network television premiere this Sunday. Sunday night at 10 on Comedy Central. Yes. Hearing great things about Hilarious. I've yes. seen it. What's up, Ron? It is hilarious. And it's going to well, be on CD and DVD Tuesday, January 11th. Perlman. Louis C.K. But first, uh, we got Ron, Ron Perlman, Perlman in the hey, studio. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Nice Ron. to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Same Ron here. Perlman, huge fan of Louis C.K. We're on the same network, this guy. Yeah, yeah. The right. FX. I know. Un unbelievable with the Sons of Anarchy. That. that show oh, is so possible. good. I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the same place. Sons of They're Anarchy. Very liberal minds. Those guys. Great yes, show. that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. What's up, Ron? How you doing, everybody? Yeah, man, been Welcome watching to the Ron show for years. Good to see Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Unbelievable. One of my favorites, uh, I got to just bring it up real quick, uh, Alien. Uh, what was it? Res uh, Resurrection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah, good. No, that was one of the franchises I managed to close down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went through a spate of that. I closed down a lot of venerable, venerable old institutions. Star Trek, they never made another one of those. <laughs> that was done. They had, a, uh, they had to reboot the whole, the whole thing. What I'm proud about, and this is probably more a public service than anything else, was I closed down the Police Academy franchise. Oh, thank was, you for doing wow, that. Wow, you are on the really last one of those? Yeah. You should get a trophy wow. for that. Definitely the last one of those. And, and I, I take personal credit for it too but look at what you're doing with uh like hellboy people uh, people love hellboy i closed that one, too. Closed that one. <laughs> <laughs> i liked it jesus christ thank you you're in the island of dr moreau how 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 nuts was brando to be around Brando was actually the he was he was like the rock compared <laughs> to some of the shit that was on that set. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the weirdest movies was, I ever saw. That was like you know after Heaven's Gate, the biggest clusterfuck in movie history. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did him and Val Kilmer not like each other? There was something between him and Val Kilmer. Um, I really can't comment. One of them is still alive. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that wow. movie was crazy. Yeah, that yeah. movie just started feeling like you were just hanging around that island after a while. <laughs> you actually, like it just felt like you were you there. You should have yeah. been there. Right? <laughs> it, it, it was. I mean, they they actually hired me. I was really in essentially one scene and then a couple of little pops, you know. And I was my my deal was for three weeks. I ended up being there for four and a half months. Oh my god! And. Uh, I, I, you know, I, at one point I just turned to the director and said, "What, what, what the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and he goes, "Well," and it was the, the great John Frankenheimer, mm -hmm. one of his last uh, assignments, um, the great late John Frankenheimer. Um, but he was like an old school dude, and you know, just completely like not part, not part of the 21st century at all, and. Uh, <laughs> Although this was the early 90s, so he was so, entitled, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, uh, he says, well, um, uh, Marlon says, 
give it to the guy from Quest for Fire. I said, <laughs> give what to the guy? Said, Every every one of Val's lines. Give it, just give it to him. <laughs> the guy from Quest. That guy can act. <laughs> so I said, so I'm, I'm, you know, I may be here for the rest of my born days, right? He goes, possibly, possibly, Ron. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, you're in a uh, season of the witch. That's true. Is the uh, the new movie that's uh, coming out? Mm -hmm. Nicholas Cage. Right. Nicholas Cage. What a movie machine he is. Jesus Christ. He makes a lot of films. He does make a lot of goddamn. That's gotta be films. pulling in three, four hundred grand a year. Well, he's, perhaps he's... <laughs> He he seems. I you think that much. He's um he's uh I think he's working on three right now. Jesus, like the fuck? He's gonna start doing them live after a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. I'll come to your house if you can't go. To I'll do the whole fucker. Uh, I play all the parts. When when is that opening up? Uh, it opens Friday. Friday. Friday the seventh. Yeah. And uh, who are you? Uh, who are you in that? I'm his. His buddy. Oh, really? <laughs> I know. Is this a stretch? What's it's a buddy on? film. It's it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of things. It's uh, uh but but essentially, um, and what, you know, what was most attractive to me was that you know he and I are these these two uh, warriors, uh, warrior knights in the Crusades, and we've been fighting kind of shoulder to shoulder for like a dozen and a half years, and um, you know, um, so. It, it's it's on that level. It's a buddy movie, and then the, then it's kind of like Bing Crosby and Bob Hope road picture <laughs> on the road. We, 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 we are all things to all people. <laughs> and then there's a little witchcraft, a little this, a little that, you know, a little come Wait, song and dance. <laughs> when when you got into uh, acting, did you think because uh, you have become kind of uh, this action. Uh, action star guy. Mm. Uh, yes, at sixty I turned. More than sixty. <laughs> just, when I, just when I can't do anything about it, <laughs> they like... actually want me to run up hills. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Wow. Yeah, because I've noticed over the years, like at, at first, uh, early on, you weren't really cast in uh, in, in uh, the action roles, and now, you know, uh, a little later in your career, mm. I guess. Uh, well, everyone else has died off. Is, is what's oh, happened. That's yeah. So they're, you hang they're out giving you the enough, parts. Yeah, if you hang out long enough, you're the only one that's left on that list. You know. And and you were on. You were like one of the most well known, unrecognized people on uh, Beauty and the Beast years ago. Yeah. Uh, when you're on that TV series. Uh, how was that? That must have been. Was it frustrating for you? Uh, no, actually, just the opposite. You know, yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, you see guys, guys like Nick Cage, really have to give thought to their every movement. You know, they just, you know, and I'm like, I'm at the, you know, the Gelsons in L.A. at, you know, like, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, and no one cares. No, I mean, you know, I, I, I can go anywhere. I can just to to this day. And and do anything. I have never never had to make an alteration to my you know sordid lifestyle. You're pretty recognizable though. Jesus. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I think the FX show, you know, this which is the it same that Louis yeah. Louis on, uh, has has uh, uh, magnified the profile. But you know, um, I mean, I was able to to basically move through life, uh, you know, unfettered, because uh, just nobody gave a shit. <laughs> 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 Fucking honesty, I love it. I love it. Holy shit! Hey, we it's got a it. little too early in the morning. It's, it's, uh, you know what? More of that. Let's say hi to Bill in uh, Boston. Bill. Bill. Hey, Juan. I, uh, I just want to let you know that I love your work on Sons of Anarchy, and I really like the Mutant Chronicles. I, I really enjoyed that movie. Thanks for all your work. Oh, it's my pleasure, my friend. My pleasure. All right, I'm looking at you that. have a question, or you just want to kiss his ass? <laughs> I guess that's it. No question. All right, no have question. Have a nice day, just, Bill. He just loves Sons of Anarchy and everything. And the Mutant do. Chronicles. And, uh, and of course, yeah. Yeah. Who, you, who will ever forget? What do you? I guess a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Bill didn't. Bill didn't forget. God what do you? Uh, what do you like watching? What, what, is, what kind of shows you uh, um, enjoy? I'm a. I'm a. Uh, I'm a. I'm a kind of a. I've turned into a political junkie a little bit, but, really? I, but I get all my news through MSNBC because I'm like, you know, I'm a, a lifelong, you know, lower middle class Jew lefty from, <laughs> from upper Manhattan, you know, so, mm. you know, I like having my news filtered through, you know, a blue lens. Through the liberal. Uh, so I'm a, Chris, uh, yeah. I'm a Chris Matthews freak. Uh, okay. Watch that show, every, TiVo that show every day. And, you know, when, when, uh. When I'm on my own time, it's just turning classic movies, pretty much. Yeah, that's my that's my like my that's my my uh, antidote to a cold, hard, really cruel world. 
Really? Do to you go get... back and watch old black and white movies. And go, oh, <laughs> ah, oh, what a oh, sinful hum, time. Oh, Humphrey. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Carrie. Oh, Bert. You know, that's it, man. I mean, it, you know, it's just a, another time and place. A you know? simpler time, it yes. Seems, it seems like uh, it was, it seems like it was, uh, there was a little order of the universe back then. Which... Little English people with high collars arguing very politely. <laughs> yeah, they're, <laughs> that's they're a little pinky. Yeah. Out. I, I was watching one of those movies, and it was these English uh, English guy in trial for murder, and the, the lawyer's supposed to be a brilliant, uh, arg you know, arguer or whatever debater. <laughs> you better than me. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, "I put it to you that you murdered her," and the guy says, "I put it to you that I didn't." <laughs> I put it to you that you did. And everyone's like, ooh. <laughs> a lot of people are putting it to a lot of other motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got some uh, people booing that you said MSNBC. They're on. Right. Oh, really? Ah, fuck yeah. them. Yeah. Well, pol They're politics booing. will absolutely divide everybody oh God, and, and get them Yeah, but it's like a sports team now. Right. Yeah, Fox it really is. News yeah, versus it is. MSNBC. Yeah, that's all like, it is. You're right. Fuck the Red Sox. Boss, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yankees, Red Sox. Uh, it has to start buying your MSNBC jersey now. Yeah, because ask that guy, why don't you like it? Well, because just liberal. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about liberals you don't like? Just because he's bashing Bush. No, he's not even president anymore. Yeah, but liberal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same. And it's the same on the other side. Why don't you like Fox News? Just because just conservative. <laughs> so, just like all of a so sudden, conservative. It's just like, yeah, you just went gay when he talked about <laughs> No, 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 it's California. It's not gay. Yeah, oh, it's the, the, I'm going with the California. It's just conservative. I, 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 just like I slip into asshole. that all the time myself. No, I do too. Do you, are you well, involved politically at all in, in, in any Just in anything? my living room. Just I, in your I, living room? Yeah, your armchair yeah, I kind yell of? and scream. I mean, I'm very, very politically involved in my car. Yeah, oh, okay, so you could yell right. and, and scream. Do, yeah. you, do you check in on what the other side's talking about and doing a... Get Absolutely yourself annoyed. Not. Absolutely not. No? Really? No. I just don't. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all poppycock to me. <laughs> Is it, what, 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 like, what do you think? Does it affect you in any way? Uh, do, you, do you really think it affects you in any way, personally? Who's in charge? Like, now, today, as a matter of fact, you know, the Republican House is going to be uh, sworn in. Do you think that is going to affect you in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, they're not swearing in anybody else, because just the Republican just House. Just the Republican House. Um, <laughs> do um, I think, I actually do. I really do. I really do think that, uh, that, that government plays a role in and um, in people's everyday lives I, I you know you, you know you look at uh, things that ha that are historic landmark sweeping legislative uh, um, victories you know like the Civil Rights Act and, mm -hmm. and, and Medicare and um, Medicaid and all that stuff and uh, you know, even the, even I mean, even the abolishment of slavery, which were you know things that that really affected the the whole sort of not not just spiritual it affected the South, <laughs> but um you know <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> and it it always came with these horrific bloody bloody fights, and there are still people today that are railing against FDR, you know, for you know, yeah, fucking well, socialist well, welfare state, you know, and you know, I mean, um, hey, that's uh, uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, slavery uh, emancipation hmm. was that a piece of legislation or was it an executive? Or, what, how did he? Do, it never occurred to me. How did it he ended do up it? to be an amendment to the Constitution? It was an amendment to the Constitution because the original Constitution allowed for slavery, and 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 it, in order to I mean, you know, uh, the, the Civil War was was the execution of, uh, you know, the unearthing of of uh, the the illegality to secede from the Union. Number one and number two, then uh, you know, um, they needed to add an amendment to correct the. So the, how do you, know, you, you when you have put an amendment, Congress has to do that, right? Or Congress has to do they that. Have to but, vote, it know. has to be a huge lopsided vote or something. Some guy just sneaks uh, into the middle uh, of the night and writes it and goes, "No, that was here." <laughs> You didn't see that? In fact, John Boehner was still was in office back then. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Boehner. I, I, well, politics are very polarizing. How many times have I said that, Lou? Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, though. But I know some some actors really get on board. You know, like Sean Penn is going down there and meeting with the. Uh, 
uh, Chavez, Chavez, and and yeah, you know, he's, <clears throat> he's always going over the Middle East, and uh, he's consistent. I, I, I don't agree with him, but I, I'll he say this: he's a very consistent guy. He is consistent, <laughs> and he's a fucking amazing actor. So it's like it's like I love his work. I, I, he's a guy who I find annoying, but I love him so much. His work is so good; it's like you can't not like the guy. Yeah, because mm, some guys, try. some actors that are into politics, it seems like they're just trying to find more. Uh, lists that they can get on. Yeah, yeah. It's not really about right. the cause. It's like That's I got I like. Go. Like when I hear that the White House w briefed Barbara Streisand, yeah. I'm like, don't fucking waste all what these people's know? time You're doing that. That's why I like. She just wants to know that she can fly jet into DC. That's why I like Ron opinion. just does get it from briefing. his living room. Right. I know. I, do. I You know. I, I think that there are people who who spend their lives, you know, professionally doing that, and I I have a different life choice professionally, and it's not. You know, I I also think that it's not necessarily helpful when entertainers get involved in things that they yeah. shouldn't. You know, yeah. you see some of these like guys that up here before Congress to testify about you know their pet peeve. And yes, I, you know, <laughs> that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, you know? I don't yeah. think that helps. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it's helpful. I, I think the, I think the no. best thing I can do for somebody I support is stay as far the fuck away from them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you know what happens if if you know they don't like uh, you know. A movie I did. Yeah, that that guy's gonna lose votes. It's an awful way for a cause to get shot yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Police Academy eight stunk yeah. so bad. Yeah. yeah, fuck the unborn. That movie stunk. <laughs> That's right. You know, so so I just I just quietly. You know, so you, well, I mean, there's a reason I have a lead by example bumper sticker on. I mean, that's the way I feel. <laughs> Jimmy's <laughs> disgusting me today. <laughs> do you uh, do you, are you getting a lot of uh, uh, bikers uh, getting in touch with you and stuff? Uh, are, are there some frightening people that you've met? Uh, because of Sons of Anarchy. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're frightening, but they're but they're but they they're showing us a huge amount of love. Yeah, I don't uh, doubt it. Are there any like, that don't like you? Are there any that feel like that's not the way we are, man? No one has emerged yeah. so far that doesn't like. I'm sure there are people sticking, you know, pins and dolls, you know, Ron <laughs> Perlman dolls, <laughs> um, Hellboy dolls, uh, you know, but. Uh, you know, no, I, I, I've actually, you know, we only work five months a year, which is the beauty of, of, of working on FX. You only Great. do 13 episodes, so you have a lot of time to do other, other stuff. And uh, between the second and third season, I was like all over the United States doing various other projects. And every time it became known that I showed up in like Albuquerque or, or uh, you know, uh, Illinois, something, something like that. I would get a message, you know, that the guys want to sit down, oh, you know, and, and, and have a little sit down. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'll, uh, let me give you a call. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've, I've yet to take advantage of it, but, but, um, out of <clears throat> you know, that's when you know you realize how insignificant the, the, what the New York Times has to say about your work is. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah. But you know, when the bikers actually endorse you and, and say, you know. You know, we're not that thrilled that there's, you know, because, you know, they're, they're outlaws, at the, essentially, at the end of the day, and mm -hmm. they'd rather stay off the grid and off the radar, but they they have shown us a huge amount of support for the how nuanced the show is, how mm -hmm. ungratuitous the show tries to stay, and how, you know... That you don't stereotype uh, it and just paint a typical yeah, picture. Yeah, where, you know, because pretty much every time you've seen anything with bikers, except for, like, Easy Rider... Um, which was like not really a biker thing. It was just mm. two guys on bikes, but but it's it's pretty. It's usually pretty superficial. It's usually just like uh, you know, they they use the world you know for for ends that don't really service the world or that stereotype the world. Right into a town. Yeah, do you remember Joe leave? Namath made a biker movie? Oh, damn. C C C Rider. C C Rider. No. He made the biker movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they show him walking through a supermarket and like grabbing a milk carton and drinking it and then yeah. throwing it on the floor oh, and just crazy. like pushing people around a little oh, bit. Oh, he was crazy uh, in that. Crazy biker guy. Oh, he's got Joe Namath. This Dear show is so good though. Have you watched it? Sons of oh, yeah, yeah. Rules. It's yep. so good. And I, I don't. I don't keep up with anything regularly. I don't. I can't keep. I. I. You know. I just don't have time, and I've got kids and stuff. But I'm very busy, man. Every time it comes on, every time I. I see it. I think I can't because dramas. A lot of dramas are too intense and too involved. 
and you'll see guys talking and and the scenes like this low talking S cyrus wants to meet on tuesday but do we have the chips to you know leverage That's him and i'm like what the, who the fuck are you people talking about <laughs> but if when I, when I watch that show i watch for two more minutes and then i'm like wow they gotta get cyrus to meet <laughs> and what's gonna happen to him i hope cyrus I doesn't decide to be a no show <laughs> yeah. yeah do you ride do you <clears throat> i uh, don't ride well um i'm not i'm not um, that guy, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's funny because there's a the whole rest of the cast that just loves the bikes, mm -hmm. and then there's me. That's just yeah, not you know, a, not big an on actor the, uh, playing a part. Yeah, but you and have to, you have to ride. You have to ride. Scenes. You yeah, have so. to ride. Um, Are you like, but, let me go straight, and then could you get someone in here to make the turn for me? <laughs> well, they they, they hired me uh, to 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 do this part while I was doing a movie in Romania. So I general, I literally for the first for the pilot. And which segued right into the first season of filming. I got off a plane on Sunday night and and on a Harley Monday morning. Oh, had never Jesus. been on a bike before in my life. We so should. and those are heavy yeah. bikes to yeah. start on. Yeah, they, my my bike is just shy of a thousand pounds. So. <laughs> did yeah. you regret riding motorcycles under special skills? On your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. That and horseback riding. I, I, I pretty much lied about whatever you can whatever you can think of. Juggling <laughs> French. Motorcycle. The only thing I really I never lied about was the knitting. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's hard to fit that into the into the show. I've though. never done a movie about knitting. <laughs> no, always, yeah, I, took, I just took so much time out of my youth <laughs> to learn how to pearl and and whatever. Um, anyway, uh, so the first season, you know, you'd see me pulling out in a really dramatic fashion, and then you'd see me pulling in. <laughs> and the rest of it was, you know, the back of some stunt guy's some head. Some stunt mm. guy, then the, yeah. The, uh, oh, in the hiatus for the second season, I, I actually spent some time on a bike, uh, you know, tried to get find a little bit of a comfort zone, which which I'm still terrified of, 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 of. Yeah, I'm that particular, of you know, bike. it's yeah, it's scary. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. I like a little you know. metal around me when I'm driving yeah. on the road. This machine pulling you oh, by yeah. the <laughs> arm. You. I mean, I don't even <laughs> like going nasty. Pulling you by the arms. Yeah, that's, that's what it feels like. I used to have one, and I I uh, I rode a motorcycle for like two years in New York City. That's and I was tough. never totally unscared. I was always yeah. a little. I was. I wanted really badly to get in an accident that wouldn't hurt me. Like that was my fantasy, and that's exactly what happened to me. I cracked the bike up really badly, and then and that I was, was fine. You can't. So I could say, "Oh, I don't." I'm dumb. You I just, just can't be on alert that long. No. every day. You can't scratch you your can't nose. You can't have like this. No. You know, sometimes when you're driving your car, you can just kind of drift <clears throat> off a little as long as your peripherals are working. On a bike, it's just like constant no. fucking on a state no, of it's alert. Like a I was but, in a helicopter once going to do it, doing a show in western Pennsylvania, and the guy, he's just stragger. holding up the joystick with both hands. And he says, uh, I, I'm just chatting with him about how it works. And he goes, well, if I, uh, if I have a muscle twitch and let go, we just drop out of the sky. <laughs> Oh, great. We, we just fall. Thanks for letting me know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should have said to him, hey, thanks for sharing. Yeah. That's oh, what I should have said. <laughs> many, that many, been a many, many, many years ago, <laughs> many years ago, I was going to do a, a film about, the, you know, like these Long Island bikers. And so I needed to learn how to ride. And I, I was still living here in New York at the <laughs> time. So I took this, like, uh, safety course, which re you have, you're required to take, first to learn how to ride the bike, but then you got to spend all this classroom time because you got to take the written test because you got to get the license, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we walk into the, the classroom experience, and, the, you know, the first thing the guy, the instructor says is, uh, who here can say what the percentage of people who ride a bike uh, get into a crash? So uh, one guy says, 20%. He says, eh, a little higher. And this goes on and on and on. Finally, he says, nobody, nobody, a hundred percent. Really? And he wasn't jiving, man. I mean, if you ride a bike, you are going to crash. At some yeah. point in your bike you are riding career, crash. you'll crash. And, and you could be phenomenal at it. But, <clears throat> but other drivers are not looking for bikes. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like changing lanes like crazy. The classic is the left turn in front of people. People will just, they, I drive a fucking Escalade. And yeah, people can turn see left in front of me. Like, what are you doing? They can't see you. This thing is yeah. No, and on a motorcycle, you. you're only on two wheels. So if you have a slight hitch in the flow of your driving, you fall down. <laughs> fall. Yeah. And in a car, if you have like, oh, whoops, then you're like, you just hey, sort I'm of... Back. But yeah. there's, nothing, there's nothing more challenging than riding a Harley and trying to text... Text message, text, 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 text message back to your yeah. manager. <laughs> if you're I'm running late, you know. 
I had a moped accident when I was 15. <laughs> oh, I, I did. Wow, no, well, really fitting in. I don't Jim. want anybody to be alarmed, but I mean, I had one when I was 15. I flipped off the top, and I said, "I'll never get on a motorcycle." It just scared me. You, you never okay? were on a motorcycle. I was on a moped. That's what I'm saying. I would never do it <laughs> oh, okay. after that. It scares me. We are only you, have. Are a... you okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm fine. Sometimes was I still the... wake up screaming. <laughs> <laughs> was the motor running, or were you in pedal mode? <laughs> I, I, literal fucking asshole. I'm. I almost answered you. No, the motor was running. All kidding aside, I shouldn't joke about this. I really am a jizz bag. Like a motorized vehicle that you call some pedal. <laughs> we got Ron Perlman in studio. We got to let him go in a few minutes. But John in Jersey has a great Damn. question. John. Hey, uh, Ron. Just want to say love, uh, love the Sons of Anarchy and uh, all your work and some of the other movies. My question is. Uh, Honestly, how big are uh, Katie Seagal's cans? Are they really as big as they look? It's <laughs> a great question. Uh, you know, I never looked. <laughs> never, never even I looked. never looked. I never looked. It's just about the eyes. <laughs> he ne of course. It's, it's all about, you know, eye to eye. What do you think, John? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, John? Uh, extremely large. Uh, I'm just wondering if I, you know, if I could get a size or something like that. <laughs> he needs a first uh, yeah, Probably a best yeah. for you to go to katiesegal.com. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I, think, your own I think there's a little, there's a little co co a column on the left which uh, says <laughs> yeah. measurements. You, <laughs> you have to log in. I don't know. I, I really, right. don't, I really don't right, know. Hey, Ron, have you ever I'm done trying this? to save my job here. It's a yeah, funny really. thing. It's such a dumb thing to ask. It really about is. something that you know. That girl looks like she's got big tits. So I got a question now. Does she have big tits? <laughs> Does she, uh... I know. I mean, I see her and her tits are really big, so are they big? I just want to know if her tits are big. We don't... I, I, will, I will say this, John. We There's no CGI on the show. No. It's, 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 it's all, uh... It's all, um, so deal with that. Digital video. <laughs> we gotta get Ron out of here because he's doing TV. Where are you going next, Ron? Uh, he's I, all over uh, the place. WPIX. Oh, look at you. Oh. The original home of the New York Yankees. That's yes. right. Yes. When, the, when the scooter used to do the games before leaving in the third Holy inning. Holy cow. Uh, yeah. You New Yorkers. Yeah, you know, I talk scooter. Whoever was going to listen. Oh. Scooter would leave, though. Say, yes, hi to, say hi to Jill Nicolini over there for me. G thank you. I sure will. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I go back to when Red Barber was doing Yankees. I don't games. remember Red Barber. Red Barber here. Yeah. It was Frank Messer, Barber. Bill White, and, uh, and the scooter. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's like, 70s. for me, like third generation. It was originally, um, the scooter was just segueing into being an announcer. He had just stopped being the shortstop oh, when I started watching the Jesus. games. Wow. Um, Pre-money store. Yeah, in fact, they, they hadn't in invented cleats yet when I started watching Yankee games. Uh, that's not true. No, but anyway, is, uh, <laughs> isn't that uh, distressing that we all went really? <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, Ron, but uh, it was, it was Mel Allen, which who oh, you know, yeah. they'll never be the better voice of the Yankees. Mel Allen. This yeah. week in baseball is where I know him from. I didn't know him as a Yankee announcer. Yeah, uh, he was he was the Yankee announcer through my entire because I. I started watching games during the real heyday of, of the franchise, which was in the 50s, which is the entire career of Mantle, uh, most of Yogi wow. Berra, you know, um, Whitey Ford. How know. fucking old are you? You're not that old. You're yeah. in really good shape yeah. for Thank what yeah. you remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I, those memories I usually up, fit inside of a really disgusting <laughs> yeah. bag of shit. I know. Huh? Yeah. What a bunch of queers we are! Really, yeah. you saw Scooter play? You have a great body for that. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, my my, my, dad, my dad walked me into a Yankee game, my first game, in like 1952. So I don't. Oh, make it yeah, I think that's wow, why yeah. you got your your action films later in life because you once you got now that you've gone gray. And the and your whiskers look hard beaten. <laughs> it's more interesting to see you like you know chomping a cigar and fucking with somebody like looking. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's you want to see a guy that looks like this. It's got the the copper in his blood has started showing in his hair a little it's bit. Like you know, he's got a, it's more interesting. He's got the look where he has the experience of fucking people up for a lot of yeah, years. Exactly. That's somebody you want to watch. <laughs> you got punched in the face. That's a compliment. Right? I don't want to watch I fucking, never... you know, whenever Leonardo DiCaprio balls up his little fucking boy fists <laughs> and punches somebody, <laughs> yeah. um, you see the guy who, like, reel back like, oh, oh and no. you're like, nah, he didn't hit you that hard. <laughs> yeah. I but see Ron if... Perlman fucks, you know, he's, he's yeah. one of those guys who you could actually believe that he could just turn your head and yeah. kill you that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that snap. Yeah. Head, head I want to see a fist that's been holding cock since the 50s. 
face on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that actually didn't start till '61. All right, but um, <clears throat> after Mantle had already, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, thing, once yeah. Mantle was gone, it was just me and my cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, we got to get Ron out of here, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, wow. Season Ron. of the Witch. It's in the in theaters this Friday um, with Nick Cage. Yeah, and uh, FX uh, Sons of Anarchy. Great show. It's a great show. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, all our other wonderful Ron Perlman uh, gems that we love so much. Thank like you he so says, much. he uh, ruined the franchise. But I love that goddamn Alien uh, Resurrection. Yep. And, and I think you know, at that point, the franchise was done anyway. <clears throat> I don't think you had anything to do with it. You played a badass in that. I like that. Yeah, that thank, was a good one. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you very much. It's been Thanks, a pleasure Ron. being here, guys. All right, Ron Perlman, everyone. Thank you, man. All right, fucking <laughs> <Right. laughs> laughing our balls off. <laughs> a little taste of Louis C.K. doing hilarious, which is going to be on TV. Sunday night at 10 p.m. on uh, Comedy Central. And then on Tuesday, you can get the CD and or DVD. Hilarious. And we got Louis C.K. in studio today. Fucking laughing hard at that uh, shit. Thank you. So fucking funny, man. Thank God, you. Damn it. Well, that was two specials ago now. Yeah. Kind of. All right, stop bragging. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that it's old. <laughs> it's old in his mind, but that yeah, shit old, is as current as anything. We it's took this timeless. as a movie. This is the one we took to Sundance as a movie. Oh, this really? Was, it was the first right. uh, stand-up performance film that showed at Sundance. Wow. And uh, did really well there. It was fun. That saloon shit is <laughs> just great. <laughs> the vagary of the uh, the old west. Yeah. Fantastic. Goddamn, Louie. I the... hate funny people. <laughs> <laughs> how's the personal life? How's how's the daughters? Everything They're good They're great. My kids are great. Yeah. Uh, my daughters, uh, the oldest one is in third grade and the other one's in kindergarten. They go to the yes. same school now, which is a massive savings of time. Oh, with the, to walk them uh, walking to them two to different school, schools. Yeah. Pick them up at two different schools. Are you going to reflect one stop uh, drop? Are you going to reflect that in in your TV show or, or like how accurate is the well, TV and you show is very on the different. show or like like are they going to grow up up on the show? Or are you going to have to replace them? What, what, are you going to age, age them rapidly like a soap opera? <laughs> <laughs> well, the kid, I, the girls on my show are totally different than the girls my kids. Yeah, they only represent represented in 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 age. Um, but my kids are nothing like those I, girls. I, They're really fictional. I mean, most of my family... I never thought that they were an accurate depiction of mm. your kids, even though I don't know no. your kids. But but is the way you're reacting to them, that seems to be like you. No, that's, that is def definitely different, too. That's my different daughters too? and I have... Do you beat your children? Is that, <laughs> no, no, no. Is that what you're not showing on no. the show? <laughs> my daughters and I have a very real and close relationship, a very warm relationship, and we're, we're just great friends. They're my favorite people, my daughters, and we get along great. And uh, I don't get... Fr I used to get frustrated when I was younger uh, at, at having kids, just getting through a day with kids. What, no a chore from your act, we would never have known yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and I definitely distilled and purified that frustration for the sake of uh, entertainment. Uh, it, uh, I've had all through being a dad um, incredible moments and and uh, times in my life that are completely unfunny, so those are uh, kept out of there. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to see that, no one ever will. No way to make it funny. No nothing. way. Just no. no. <laughs> like, I was, uh, did a, t a bit during this last tour I did about uh, sleeping, and my daughter's waking me up in the morning, like at 6 o'clock every morning. And I don't need to get up to like 7, 7.30 to get them to school, but they get me up at 6. Because they're awake and they want to share the day with me, you know. Yeah. So uh, I did. I did this bit about how good sleep felt feels at six a.m. Like how much I don't want to wake up because I feel like <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, s fathoms deep in a river of chocolate, and there's a sleep is like an ancient whore who's <laughs> sucking me off slowly and speaking in a dead language. <laughs> you know, this whole thing I do about how badly, how, how much I don't want to wake up, then I wake up and I'm miserable. When I conceived that bit, the second part to it was the truth, which is as badly, as much as I hate getting upright at 6 a.m., once I'm feeding my kids breakfast and we're chatting, I'm so happy to get up. Yeah. Because when I'm on the road and, or when my kids aren't with me, I, sl I always sleep till like noon or one o'clock and I wake up, I feel like a piece of shit and most of the day is gone. But I get yeah, up at six sure. o'clock and even though the transition is difficult, standing there and feeding them, I feed them a full breakfast every morning. I make them bacon and Jesus eggs and stuff. And I, and I stand there watching them eat it and we chat and it's such a great 
it's such a, a real life to me. That's real. Where's but but I st when I do so when I started it on stage, I would tell the part about sleeping and about not wanting to wake up, and then I'd get to that part, and the laughter would just completely stop. Oh, shit, I had yeah. no way to make it's that funny. funny. So I stopped oh, doing you're it. Oh, good dad, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just dropped that part off. Where did then? Where does the the Louis from the TV show? Well, that guy. I mean, I definitely I like on the show to be just to to. Have Make mistakes I never would, and and uh, be more reactive and and le more le have less control over myself. It's just funnier. It's it's you're in a weird situation with this, and I think it, it it's uh, a good person to compare it to Seinfeld. I think went through the same thing. A lot of people assume that Seinfeld, because he's Jerry Seinfeld on the show, mm -hmm. that that's Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. and that is not Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, no, he's not on, like on the that. show. No. So when you watch your show, you're Louis. You're a stand-up. You're doing what you do. Yeah. So a lot of people assume that's an accurate depiction of you, head to toe. That's that's you. Yeah. No, I definitely am different than that. Guy and where do, where does that come from? Like just you make you make up a guy and kind of. I mean, it is, it's me. It's me, but I don't do the things I would do usually. Some of it is playing out fantasies, like saying things out loud to people that are bothering me that I never would say. My dumb questions are just. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed at people's creativity. <laughs> See, I can't fathom being well, able with to the kids. make shit up like that. You're like a little boy though. But are the cameras really there? Or are they <laughs> yeah. you them? Yeah. Wow! wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the the uh, I am an ass. <laughs> the kids on the show are actually two different girls played my youngest daughter last season. Dick Sark, uh, Sergeant, and Dick York. That's right. I almost fucked that up. And it I? wasn't far from that. They were very close. We, we we had a girl playing when when I started doing the show. FX wanted to make my talent deals for me because they may have these packages they give actors, you know. Really? And I said I don't want to do that because I don't want you to know who I'm hiring. <laughs> and uh, keep everything on the. I want to do it myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, our little company hires our actors directly, and also I don't want to give people series deals because I don't want to be forced to put them on the show. Yeah, I don't like having to say, oh, what are we going to have to make up for this guy this time? So um, the girls, you know, I hired two actresses to play my daughters, and my, the guy who runs FX said to me, yeah, but what if one of them gets another job? And I said, well, fuck her then. I'll get another one. I don't care. <laughs> no, one, no one cares. No one gives a shit. It doesn't matter who's playing them. It really doesn't. <laughs> and uh, You're fucking brilliant. No, true. so one of the, gir well, the girl who played my youngest daughter, she got a pilot on ABC. It wasn't even a show that went to, I knew it wouldn't go to series because no pilots really ever do. Mm. But I said, let her go. We'll get another one. And then maybe if she comes back next year, we, you know. So she left, <laughs> and then we got another one and started using her. And, and then the, the thing came up, well, this is what it, this is what FX warned me of. Do I tell them that I replaced my daughter? And I decided no, I'll just they because they don't see the show until it's complete. They don't see read scripts. They don't see footage oh, shit. Okay. until. So I figured they'll see an episode with the new kid, and then I'll get a phone call and I'll deal with it. Then. They'll assume they've so lost I, the part. Yeah. So I put it. On, I, I sent it to them. The first episode with the new girl, they didn't say anything. They didn't notice. They never noticed. And then the last one of the last episodes wow. actually. Both girls, because I used I matched two stories that weren't originally supposed to be. One girl plays my daughter in the first half of the episode, she really and another it, girl <laughs> plays her in the second half. And, and no one never, noticed. no one said anything. And I, I finally know. talked to the FX guy, and I said, "Did you know? <laughs> yeah, did you that I've notice? got two girls?" And he was like, "No." <laughs> and nobody, none of these wow. fucking commenty, complainy cunts on the internet have ever picked up on it. Nobody, because who gives shit. a shit? It, it doesn't matter. Do you know how hard it's it is to get creative control like that? Like, there's that's Doesn't like a fucking exist. Kubrick or Spielberg type of thing. Nobody has a hundred percent. That's amazing. Dude. Well, I, and it's and it's from being on the other side of the spectrum from those guys that we drove the show down to be so cheap that it's not it's not like they were just Spielberg happy. owns the yeah, world so yeah, he can do yeah. what he wants. But me, no one cares what I'm doing because my show can be paid for by advertisers that literally don't know what the show's about. It's perfect. If the show was a little more expensive Jesus. or on a little bit earlier, then, you know, I don't know who, Nescafe or, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Nescafe. General I, Mills. General Mills would say, <laughs> who's this and Louis Gamble. person? <laughs> yes, but right now, fucking some lawyer from New Jersey is paying for my show. <laughs> Changed out the shit. fucking daughters and no one knew. No, and also, I don't wow. have that control by contractually. I don't have a deal that says I can do what I want. 
the deal that I have that I signed says that FX has full control over the show and that they have to yeah, approve never, every decision sure. that I right. make. But whether they do that or not is that another In thing. practice, they've never done it, yeah. and, but I earned that with every show. If I turn in two shitty episodes... <laughs> Um, I'll start having an executive on the set, and Some I'll have to turn in fingers in there. But how yeah. great is that that they fucking allow that? That's like, like you're giving them a great product, and they're not fucking fucking with they're it. That's, you that's so nice. Well, that's the refreshing. way I rare. the way I got it was that I was willing not to take to do the show any other way. I was willing to say no. you have to really be willing to say no to stuff if you really want the gig and you feel like you can't live without it. Then you'll give away everything. And they it's ask, so rough they, they when would you're be close. like, "Well, we want to read scripts," and I go, "No, nah, I'm not interested in doing it that way." <laughs> I, I, we established it with the pilot. I said, I'm, "This is the only way I'll do it. You give me the money, I'll make I'll make a show." Well, we'd like to find out who's in it. Not interested in telling you that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no. And if you want to know who's in the show, then I'd rather not do it. Like I, I said that a few times through the process and meant it. That, <laughs> yes, I did, and I meant it. Well, we'd like to ha visit your set. I don't want you here. It, but I totally understand why you would want to come here because you're paying for the show. But I'd rather we just said call it off. <laughs> wow. And I just kept saying that, and they were so cool. And the guy who runs FX, John Langraff, is a genius. And he said uh, he kept everybody off of me, and I and I and it worked. I gave them a show they liked. If I'd given them a show that needed work, they would have been like, "Yes, we'll give you a green light, but you need more supervision." But they're like, "Do you keep doing it that way." But he—he's the one who got me to do it without signing that. He said, "Look, so I you can't. Come up there's with, no deal that exists like, that covers this." So. Hitler, Hitler, <laughs> a love story you could have come up with. And you could have yeah, done anything. I could have done anything, but since I turned in something that was basically funny and competent and didn't look crazy, they okay. Let's keep doing it as long as it works. But I, episode by episode, I I have to earn that. Mm -hmm. So each episode. So they've so far they've liked and they just keep saying all right it's good they don't ever give me notes or anything they just let me oh, as as they stay hands off. It's the best job i ever had well and that gives me freedom not only to do what i want and be edgy duh. it also <laughs> duh. i don't have a good work ethic like i can't complete things and i don't have a consistent focus wow so i can do things like write a, half a sketch on the show or half a story and I then I can't get around to finishing it, See but that? I go ahead and produce it anyway. I send it to I have, get them to cast the parts, and I start shooting it without an ending. It totally um, comes across. You totally come across to me as a guy that is the finish it guy. Well, I'll I do. Like, I, it takes me a long time to finish stuff. It takes, but but I mean, like to to me, I really thought you were the kind of guy that like. Because uh, from a lot of the short things I've seen you do uh, online and things like that, it's like I have an idea and I'm actually going to do it. And you do Some it. Some of them are like that. <laughs> Some things that I've done, I know that I, like, I have an idea and five minutes later I actually know how it's going to be shot and finished and everything. So you, you, don't, you like actually that. won't finish it sometimes? You'll, have, like, you'll, you'll know where you want to start and kind of where you might want to end up and then just know it's going to work out. Yeah, and I, I'll, just, I'll just shoot a scene that I know is funny and then I'll, I'll figure mm. I'll find a place for it. It doesn't have a context <laughs> yet. Well, you got the confidence that you're well, going like to get Well, like in the episode on the show that's, that's about uh, religion, yeah. it starts with this thing of me going into a public restroom and there's a glory hole. <laughs> and I didn't have a plan for that scene. I just like the idea of this glory hole whole thing <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I started shooting it we shot it and it was totally different and then we shot it and I didn't like it actually and in in the actual original version the dude sticks his penis in this glory hole and he has this religious orgasm that I watch happen and yeah. that was the original thing and I watched it, and it was just, it was gross. It was creepy. Creepy <laughs> and weird and unfunny. And so I shelled it. I said, fuck this thing. I forgot. I mean, I, I have the ability to shoot something, and then no one ever sees it. So I figured I'm going to bury this. It'll never be on television. But then we started shooting the religion episode, and it hit me. This would be it. I could take just the beginning of that bit and have it just be a discussion starter. Yeah, for a little intro kind of. Yeah. So <laughs> some kind of stuff I shoot without knowing how I'm going to. Use it. That's cool. As and hell. there's been stuff that Never you shot that, that you probably wow. haven't used, right? That you know, like, yeah, yeah. Somewhere, yeah. There's whole bits that Nick DiPaolo, who's on the show a lot mm -hmm. as himself, I originally put him in a suit and tie and had him play almost like a Catskills. Like he did, <laughs> he did kind of a character and he wore a suit and tie. Like, and I just like they had this weird idea that there's an old timey. Uh, Dean Martin kind of comedian in the midst of these. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and I, I have one bit. One whole thing that I shot with him in that character, 
Uh, that never will be on the show, but it's on the DV. Uh, it's on the DVD. You put it on a nightmare scene yeah. for Nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick has a nightmare that that's who yeah. he is. I was gonna, I was gonna say DVD would. No, and also because like I don't make serious deals with people, and because nobody cares who's on the show, I can like B- uh, Bob Kelly. I hope he's. I mean, I I, I should probably call him after <laughs> to oh, tell him. Oh, that, no. But Robert Kelly, who played my brother on the show, he yeah. he. I didn't have any plans to have a brother on the show. It's just I wrote one scene for him, and he really nailed it. And exactly. I, he had that really pathetic quality to that Bob has uh, that you just want to punch him and hug him. <laughs> oh, the diner scene's fucking yeah. fantastic. And so that. he was so good in that, and that I gave him a few more episodes. This season, I might not have him on. You're basically because saying you don't have a brother anymore. <laughs> I don't have a brother because I don't have a brother in real life. Happy days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, the fat <laughs> Chuck, how does that feel? <laughs> Can we call Bobby right now and tell him? No, please? no. You're Chuck. No, Bobby. I don't want to hurt him. He, and he might. He no, might. he's tremendous. Bobby's great. Everything I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing, I'm writing season two. <laughs> I'm writing season two right now, and it's, and I haven't written a bit for him, and I've, and I introduced a sister into the show, because I have actually three sisters. So I have Bobby a, with a wig. A sister <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> so he may not be on. But then I, the other day I came up with a bit, I thought that actually might be good for him. But I, he also might come back as a different character. I don't know. Say that if I'm serious. Great you should have him come back as two people at once because he's put weight on just to humiliate him. Exactly. When he's in the car, though. It is such perfect Bobby when he's just like, hey, dude. Hey, dude. 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 No, Jim is in one season, one scene last year. And uh, probably I'll use him as a totally different guy. He's in his himself with a fucking the, necklace uh, over his T-shirt like an asshole. Was it Did a, I have a necklace I, on? Necklace that, over the that T-shirt. That was probably, I was, uh, I think, was that the, the, the necklace? The lucky, that was my Lucky Louie thing that Pam gave me. Oh, I, that's right. That's why. That's the only reason I, wore, I never wear jewelry. I that's hate jewelry. Right. That was that poker scene was some great writing. But I do Holy characters, shit. too. So if you need a character like a French guy or whatever. Do you I'm have one of those? Come on, try one out. Louie, I will be happy to be on. Fucking good, man. You know what would be great? French <laughs> <laughs> would be to actually have him on as a French guy <laughs> and say that he's a French guy and have him do that <laughs> to have it be like a French like a bakery I go into yeah, and, he yeah. goes, and he goes oh it's so nice to see you <laughs> do the guy like hey I good am morning I'm so happy you came to my bakery <laughs> <laughs> can I get do you have other croissants this morning they are delicious and hot just the way you like them <laughs> all of a sudden you're German but, yeah, but there was a whole World War II thing <laughs> My family. I'm writing backstory. Oh, He's Alsatian. Okay. He's Alsatian <laughs> French. <laughs> Vichy. Uh, I could almost totally see doing that. <laughs> Why not? Just have him play this broad and don't just no, have it be this No character. explanation. No. Nothing. Good. And maybe we have one of those, like, it's a character, we have one of those, ah, it's been a tough uh, day with the kids. You know, fatherhood is tough, right, uh, Francois? Oh, yes, it is tough to raise them properly. You have to let them go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking good, man. I mean, you he's got wisdom. Know. He's got a little wisdom. Yeah, a lot of wisdom. You close your eyes, you can see the beret. Yeah. If I turn that on, that show on, and I saw, saw that, that I, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> right. I would shit my and pants. I'll just do really is... hacky French jokes. <laughs> well, if you're children, you should surrender. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, an aside, you can see, see him just walking down the street and just say hello to him, and he's got the paper bag with a baguette sticking out of it <laughs> yes. and some celery and a beret on. <laughs> and, but I'll have to make sure the audience knows. Like, you'll say something. I'll be, I'm glad you came in because I am French. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> See, I love the idea of doing this because, like, Ricky Gervais's character didn't fit the rest of the season at all because I didn't do any other cartoonly stupid characters like that. I did one. <laughs> and there's people that complained about it, like, this doesn't fit. And I'm like, really? so really? what? Fuck you. I mean, one thing I love to do on my show is that even the most, the people that are the biggest fans of the show have things that make them upset about it. That makes me happy. <laughs> I never like in the pilot when the girl fit. gets in the helicopter and flies right, away. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like, "That's where it really." Yeah, it did really. So fuck you. I wanted to do it. That's well, my I show. Want, yeah. Right. If you don't like it, stop watching. If there's enough of you guys, I'll get fired. That's what we. I say don't all give the a time. shit. So when, 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 it would way, be great if next season <laughs> is really down to earth and real. And really, you know, just believable, incredible, but there's this one <laughs> sore thumb piece of shit. Wrench. Not even played by a guy who knows how to do it. Like, it would be bad enough to get a stereotypical French guy who actually yeah, yeah. is, a, you know, and you, and trained, you know, but this guy doesn't even have any handle on the accent. And you got, you got it's to not go, what he's known for, <laughs> to use Jimmy that way. But you got to go all in and have him in every episode, just yes. to really hammer yeah. the... 
awfulness home. Oh, that would be horrid oh, every yeah. fucking episode. Mm. That would be great. It's like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Will Ferrell told me that he, he used to have in his head uh, these couple watching SNL. Let, he would imagine, and he would do moments that he used to call holy moly moments, where the husband of the couple, he would do things on SNL that he pictured the guy going, holy moly. <laughs> like, like, Jesus. What the hell is he doing? That's what this is going to be. That's a holy moly. I think we're probably doing it, too. So, Jim. <laughs> Jim, get ready. I've, I've been working on my French accent for fucking since Perfect. about 8.48. Really <laughs> so you got to do it now. Noxious thing By the way, do. was that the pilot also that uh, Chelsea was in? Chelsea's when, the one who got in a helicopter. When you, when, away. when you open the door and pin her behind uh, the door, yes. that is one of the yes. mo best awkward uh, scenes horrible. ever. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. Uh, the thing that was amazing about that I to me that. was that I wrote that, and then they went and f I mean, I wrote it in the script. It wasn't something that we just sort of found. Right. I said, that there's a, the door is too close to the stairs, <laughs> and when he opens the door, there's nowhere for her to go but behind it. <laughs> That's and so great. he holds it open, pinning her. I wrote that, and they had to go find the the the. Text. Yeah, because now the scouts had to find you got to find a door that they that had works to scour like the that. East Village to find a building that was willing to let us shoot there. That would have, have that, that situation. Yeah, without it looking like we forced it. I do hate the awkward double door. Try to hold the door for the yeah, girl thing because now she's in, and some girls know how to actually kind of stop there and wait. Right, and you could open it, but then most of them lunge for it and open. And now she's opening the door for you, and then you got to make the whole <laughs> tit for tat joke. Like, yeah. Oh, oh then you did it for now, me, which is now funny. Now we're even. Now yeah. we're laughing at unfunny oh. moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you held it for me. Door. <laughs> I can't open. wait for this to be over. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to fuck your ass and throw you out my window. <laughs> 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 Fucking moderately amusing cunt. <laughs> moderately, <laughs> moderately amusing cunt. Yes. That would. That some comedian should have that as a special. So <laughs> Whitney Cummings next special. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just picked one out of the hat. I know he just picked a woman. Uh, sure enough, why not? Pick the woman out of the hat. That's what I always do. Hey, uh, Louis, the open yeah. to uh, the show, a guy flips off the fucking camera. Yeah, and it, there's some discussion about that. If you yeah. set that up, or if that was real. Oh no, that was. If I had set it up, that would have been a shitty. Way to do it. Yeah, but no, I w when we shot that the last night of this of the pilot shooting We shot the stand-up at the comedy cellar and we were figuring out as we were going along how to do that And I got a steady cam operator to stand on stage with me at the cellar. That's how we shot that and uh, So you get that first person feeling mm, right. It's the same way I shot the stand-up on hilarious on the special that's out at 10 o'clock uh, nice. so, someday Central, on Comedy Sunday Central night. and then later on DVD. And you do and Netflix. You do Beautiful. acknowledge the camera at one point. Yeah, oh, during it the hilarious like special. Right yeah, because he got too close. Or, yeah, yeah. And I could hear the guy's cans. I could hear the, the, the tech director talking to the camera person. <laughs> okay, go to three. We're going yeah. to pack his hand. And you're trying to fucking do I actually hear her telling him what he's doing. Go, get go a little closer. You can get closer, Jim. <laughs> oh, you geez. can get closer. <laughs> And I'm talking moment, to a fucking yeah. audience of 2,000 people during a set that I've been preparing for a year. Yeah, I'm glad you left that in. Cause and I had to turn to him and say, you get it back off because I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. It's but we left it in because yeah. it is a strange... I think if you watch the show high, that's probably a really fucked up moment. Because <laughs> you, you You're feel just absorbed weird. in it. Yeah, you feel like... And all of a sudden you go... You know, like, it would have been a funny thing to say, hey, Captain Obvious, you want to back up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can think of this stuff later. You know? Back to the guy who, who, who flipped off the camera. Yes. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> Dying, sorry. <coughs> okay, the guy, um, so we shot at the comedy cellar with a steady cam, and then when we were done, we we're sitting, I was standing out in the village, it was the summer, and the village in the summer is just so Crazy. active, and I thought, maybe I should shoot a moment outside, and then it hit me, I don't have an opening sequence to the show, I don't have a way to open. And just to hand something into FX, just to give him something. I, I assume we'll shoot some kind of a really slick opening someday for this show. <laughs> but just to have something to give them when we turn in the pilot, because they only gave us $200,000 to do the pilot, which is a lot, very low money for a pilot. Yeah, yeah. So we had a Steadicam guy there, which is a very expensive rig and, and person. And I said, uh, why don't we just... Uh, 
put the guy at steady cam on with a 25 lens, doesn't matter. And, uh, <laughs> and I'll walk from the, from the, uh, Third Street subway to the comedy cellar, which is my walk. That's how I get to work every night. And, uh, and just fall, you know, walk in front of me with the camera and just, we'll just shoot that. And so we're walking. He, we did exactly that. I came out of the subway. We only did it once. And he followed me. And then I got to, I just followed my instincts. I got to Ben's Pizza on McDougal Street and went in for a slice. That's why I always do get a couple of chomps. <laughs> yeah. Because usually what happens is I put my kids to sleep and then I get a babysitter to come and then I run to the cellar and I haven't eaten. They, they, I fed them dinner and put them to bed. So I just need a little bit of uh, calories in me to do a set. So I, I, I started eating the pizza and the camera stayed there and just watched me eat pizza. And uh, I these young Asian kids with spiky hair, kind of like cool alt punky kids yeah. walk by and they see a camera. So they like think, oh, fuck you. Like this kind of <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Young people contrary to anything. Uh, yes. You know, oh, ooh, fuck you, man. And the kid really did it like that. Like you can't hear it because there's no sound. But he's and he was stupid that he didn't. You know, he he could have just stood in front of the camera, and but really he, as he walked by, yeah, fuck you! Like he did it like that, and I just watched him, and I kept a straight face. You can see me glance at him after he gives me the finger, and I thought, and I thought because I saw, I know the scope of the lens that we had on. I'm like, I I know we just caught that, and I know it's out of focus, and I'm so happy that just happened. That's just so, and it, and it was a moment that I thought I this show's going to be on TV. Like that <laughs> moment, yeah, yeah. literally, when he flipped off the camera, I thought, because I was like, that's so cool that that's going to be in the opening credits, and I knew this is <laughs> going to be the opening credits of the show. I'm not replacing this, and I think we're going to get on the air. Like, it just made me believe. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because of the fun, to me, the coolness of getting this middle, this this legitimate, sincere middle finger in, the, <laughs> in this the New York that, City show. That New York... Mm. What, City moment. One of the funniest yeah. things that happened on, on Lucky Louie to me was we were doing a scene and there was a woman who was a bartender and she had a shirt on and on the shirt was like the little clear tag that had like LLL like for Laura. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you know when it was from the gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you forget yes. to take those off the back of your leg. And yes. We were rehearsing and Louie goes to me, all I want is for that to be shot and on television. Yeah. <laughs> I want that so bad. Yeah. And it was, I think. I don't think we had to take it off. I don't know if they took it off or they caught it, but you're like, I, I just don't want them to That's catch great. that. Yeah. I, want, I want her to have that on television. Oh, no. I love when imperfect oh, things happen. And awful things. <laughs> and I go, we're using that. It's easier to do on this show than Lucky Louie. There was some, uh, some level of people trying to perfect stuff all the time, and that used to make me irritated. Look, look how easy it is to just pull shit up. Yeah, I, this I is, was very happy when it came yeah. on Netflix, by I, the way. I love the open of this fucking show. Yeah, man. this is just, so I just, real. I was really tired. We had been shooting all day. And, uh, yeah, you look very natural. Like, that's how you look yeah. walking. And actually, it backs up if you know the geography of the Yeah, you uh, walked past it already, Lou. Past. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Uh, and then you give a I little glance again. over to him. You're dead. I just you missed it. I looked down. A little down. glance fuck. over, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. There, there he is. is. Right on. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. A camera. Fuck you, man. He's yeah, like so that means, that means anything. Dude. Yeah. The camera represents the eye of the man. <clears throat> <laughs> no, and this font is just what was uh, I use it for other shit. Yeah, and we kept it. I didn't. Yes, how much, pass, how much, that's passed by about a block. How much you have to pay for the song? I'll tell you about that in a second because I okay. I couldn't afford the song. Jeez. Here comes the dude, and I look. Oh, that's great. Then I, great. There's me looking at him, going, yeah. "Awesome." You just look Thank over. You. Thank you. Look that. over, and I'm and thinking, look mm -hmm. back. No, like... and that moment of me looking is me thinking, "This I'm gonna I'm got my own TV show." Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's I fantastic. honestly felt that way. Oh, no, the crazy. song really and the song I picked off of iTunes or whatever and threw it on for the sake of the, you know, for just to, again, just to have something to hand in right. as a complete thing. And then John Langraff, the guy who runs FX, when he saw it, he said, I think Louie fits into it. He, and also, I didn't know I was going to call it that. I just did that as a thing. And he said, I think Louie fits in. I like the opening. I like the song. He took it as the way the show's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, you're and then I needed to go filler. get, yeah. <laughs> then I needed to go get this song, Brother Louie, which actually, which uh, was originally recorded by a band called Hot Chocolate. Mm -hmm. And then it was re recorded by uh, The Stories. And so we went after it, and our legal 
tiny department. And they said they would give us, well, yeah, there's the publishing and then there's the recording. The publishing is the actual, like, the song lyrics and the arrangement. And that uh, costs us, we pay $5,000 an episode for that, which for us, wow, $300,000 show. That's a lot. Wow. That's a chunk of that our is budget. A lot. Wait, is that, now, is that a lot publisher and the artist have to get the same thing, I think? That was a way to prevent... Well, some people own Both. separately. Oh, oh, yeah. The master recording is a different group of people, because actually, hot cho- we pay hot chocolate for the publishing, or whoever owns their publishing, because they wrote it. But the stories version is the one that we wanted. Oh, okay. Um, because of that guy, Louis, Louis, Ian Lloyd, that singer. The hot chocolate version is like eight guys going, Lua, Lua, yeah, Lua. Yeah. It's not as fun. <laughs> so we recorded our own version of it. Um, Reggie Watts was a comic. He, oh, yeah, he, he did the music for the first half of the season. And then we didn't ha- have enough to finish it with him. We did it with other people. But he arranged and recorded the, um, the, the music for it that we did which is almost identical to the stories version wow. i think it's a little better it's just a little nicer <laughs> and then uh we did a version where he sang it where reggie sang it and it didn't work and we tried to think of another way to create that sound and we couldn't i was in the studio with reggie at like midnight because i all the music on this s- series i do it <clears throat> with a group of musicians it's all original music wow Jesus. and uh the, but the, when we were doing the theme song it's like i can't I, who, how are we going to do this? And then I thought, well, whatever happened to the stories? Like, whatever happened to the lead singer? <laughs> so yeah, I went on the internet, doing? yeah, and what I Googled the, the Ian doing? Lloyd. <laughs> First of all, I, 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 didn't, I Googled his stories. I don't know who the fuck he was at the time. And I saw, I found a YouTube video of him doing it on American Bandstand. And, uh, he, Louis, Louis! And so I Googled his name, and Ian Lloyd is just a guy living in New York City, and he has a, a band. It's his son's band, but he's like sings. Jesus. Christ. And so I, he's got a little website that he obviously hadn't updated since like 1989 or something, <laughs> and uh, there's an email on it. So it's like midnight, and I write a you know hail mary email. Hi, I'm a, a TV producer, <laughs> and I want to hire you to do a job. Uh, write me if you're interested. And the next morning, I wake up to an e- email. I, this is yes, this is my current please, email. Please, please. This is me. my phone number, and he gave me his phone number. So I call him up, and he's the fucking greatest guy in the world, and he's just happy to still be singing. Yeah. And I kind of asked, sort of carefully, do you still have the pipes to do what you <laughs> yeah, did on the song? Yeah. He said, sure, I do. And and I told him, look, here's the thing. Oh, because the, the, the song, we when we went to try to get it, it was like fucking $20,000 an episode they wanted for, wow. the, for the recording. For the recording of it, and They right. wouldn't back down, and we can't afford it. So I went to Ian, and I said, can we just hire you as a singer for a day? That's all I can really afford to do. I have no money for this show. And uh, he said, well... I need you to pay me enough that I don't want to kill myself. Uh, he said, basically, <laughs> I'm happy to do this for you. I just need to have some self-respect, you know. So I offered him some money, and he said, that's fine. And wow. he came, he showed up. It was one of my favorite experiences ever on the show, because he was such a good guy. And he remembered how we recorded it. He remembered he, there's a couple of tracks, and he harmonized with himself. And he helped us with it and the only thing i had him do it exactly the way he did it in the original and you could his, his voice is a little older but i like it that but ours it is a little different a little, and also yeah. i asked him to say instead of louis you're gonna cry the second time he says louis louis you're gonna die i just asked him to make that one change <laughs> which he did wow and he nailed it so we have a version that zero people believe is anything but the original stories version without having to pay without having to pay that that, that money which episode. would be going wow. to ian lloyd <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he probably fucked himself. He fucked, he fucked himself over. No, and I felt bad because when we, I did Carnegie Shit. Hall, I had this idea to have him sing sing live to introduce right. me. And I thought that would be so cool, and he'd go crazy singing Carnegie Hall. I'm sure he didn't see that coming in his future. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... And uh, but they the people at Carnegie Hall. If you do music, they charge you like you're the you. fucking z- symphony orchestra. Wow. Like they get like you're the Philharmonic. Not so I couldn't afford goodness. it, but they printed the programs that says with special guest Ian Lloyd oh, on no my, car, on my collector's Hall item. Program. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, he's a great guy, and he um yeah. God damn, but there's been people on the internet that somebody. are like, this can't be the stories version because they that says you're gonna die, and I have the stories version. I've listened to both back to back. 
They and don't I notice don't... the daughter change, but they notice that <laughs> yes. fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, that's Wait, totally could you, Luke, could you have him sing live if you had a recording, or is it just if music's being played? It like was... if you had the music taped? Well, at that point, they, I wanted to have like a little combo band, and then they said that would cost a lot. And then they said, well, you could... Uh, you could do it with playback, and yeah. then I said, "Well, I just don't want to do it." So you just mm. you just Look, called for, me out on a lie. <laughs> I really yeah. just kind of backed out on hiring, uh, but I never told him I was going to hire him. For comparison, we got the original. Oh yeah, okay. Right Go at the ahead. hook, uh, the All stories right. version. Yeah. yeah, a little slower. He's a little grittier now. A yeah. little more in his voice. All right, and then we're. Just, what made you think of this song ours, for the yeah, show? Ours. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Danny. You got the uh, the other one. Buddy. What? Oh, you want me? No, yeah, you got the no, the original from the open. Oh, from the open. Uh, uh, Lou, your oh, version, you your version's way better. I think I you like really it updated it. Let's say. Here we My go. Bad. My bad. This opening is from the hot chocolate version. They open this way. The right, stories right. version is more '70s stringy in the beginning. Yeah, there's more strings here. Yeah. It sounds almost like... Uh, sounds good. What's the guy who did uh, Fred is Dead? Uh, Fred is Dead. That's what I said. Yes, like yeah. that. Who is that guy? Was this a popular song? Yeah, yeah it was oh, a hit. Oh, it was a big hit. Okay. Curtis Mayfield, I think. Curtis Mayfield. The, the music is a little Curtis Mayfield. Wow. That strings... Da -da -da -da. Yeah. Wow. Louie, uh, Louie. I always thought that the, uh, I thought that was the original lyric. No, I told right this moment doesn't exist in the original. That's fucking yeah. that, your version's way better. I just I love him. This crooning singer saying you're gonna what a, die. What a, you're gonna cry. What a great anecdote. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, usually those back back scenes things are boring. That, that was pretty. No, good that one. was very. And you uh, fucked that guy over. Man, you totally <laughs> really <laughs> fucked him over with his help. He was so fucked <laughs> with his help. Yeah, he has horrible he representation. Getting he would start getting checks from ASCAP. <laughs> right. He'd become. They'd become it every time every the show time was on show Netflix. Everything. Fucking DVD. Boom, boom. Oh, Instead, he got a day shit. rate. You had such a great experience with the guy, but you fucked him no, over. No, I, I. <laughs> Oh I owe uh, Ian Lloyd. He's a good man. He, I always get emails from him when he's in town and stuff. Put, put him in an episode. <laughs> he's a good man. No, I, I'm going to. He also <laughs> wants to act, too, so I'll put him in some. How old is he? Uh, I have no idea. Is I don't he know. black he's or 50s, white? 50s, 50s, white guy. Oh, okay. yeah. Scrawny white guy. Yeah. With a vo Nobody can, has that voice. I mean, that's, no, that's, that's a testament to what he did that fucking 30 years later, I couldn't find anybody that, that could replicate that sound. That's There's no white guy. That is amazing, yeah. No, I don't, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of, there's no, it's not soprano or something. It's, it's just, heroin. Yeah. Oh, that's him right there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, he looks all right. Hey, listen, like uh, he's Hoffman. awesome. Why don't we take a break? Fish boat, fishing captain. <laughs> Louis, uh, you're going to make it to the end with us, or do you got to go yeah, somewhere? Yeah, I'll hang around. Okay, good. Louis C.K., uh, he's here to promote Hilarious, which is going to be on Comedy Central Sunday night at 10 p.m. And then it'll be available on CD and DVD Tuesday. Hilarious yes, it will. is great. It's more Thank with you. Louis C.K. Stay there. C.K. I don't know if we uh, what we were just talking about is worth talking about on the air, but I was telling Louis when I walk around in my dumb life, so many people come up to me and tell me one of their favorite episodes of Louis' show was uh, the one where he follows the kid home that kind of threatened him in the donut shop. And then the episode ends with. Louie just kind of hanging out on the stoop with the kid's father. He, he follows him all the way to Staten Island. And uh, it's not a lot of laughs in there, but people love that episode. But it also, uh, you were saying, frustrates or pisses off people because they weren't laughing. Yeah, I, mean, and I don't get that. Well, because, because that could have been my favorite episode. I think it was one of my favorite ones. I mean, I like, I don't. I don't look at uh, stuff on TV as segregated comedy or drama. Right. Like, most things, actually, that are sold as comedies don't make me laugh. Like, right. I, I haven't watched a comedy movie oh, that's really yeah. made me laugh. To me, Oh, the, please, you didn't go see uh, the, the Flockers movie? Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a movie made for you, though. <laughs> that's, it's funny that's made for you. Robert De Niro, his comedies are so bad, but his oh. dramas are hilarious. Uh, to me, two of the funniest movies in history are Goodfellas and, and uh, Raging Bull. Mm -hmm. Two hilarious movies, not sold as comedies. They're sure. not supposed to be funny. What was the last comedy you, you laughed at? Do you, you remember? Fuck, I don't know. Um, maybe Dumb and Dumber. 
Wow. Like, that made me laugh just because of how dumb, dumb and, and dumber, dumber it was. was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but other than that, I haven't really laughed at a lot of... Con- I want, sometimes I watch uh, Family Guy mm-hmm. on Netflix to fall asleep. Like, it's something that actually helps me fall asleep. And uh, it makes me laugh really hard. But right. it, there's something... Uh, it, it, because it's a cartoon, I think it's just because it's a cartoons put me to sleep because mm-hmm. it's one dimensional and it has sure a sing songy way of it. Uh, family guy has these voices that talk like dang it, man, man. so it kind of puts me to sleep. It's kind of funny actually, that you say that, though. and I kind of hated it the first time I saw it because it's so jokey. But it it uh, but I gave it a chance because you should love the characters. when you you went just to something you're not used to. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people just won't do that. They're like, this isn't what I am sure is already good. So I hate it. This is not what I'm used to. But if you make an adjustment, and actually if something's not what you're used to, then you might find a new thing to laugh at, which there's nothing well, better in life. You, and if a family guy does that for me, it surprises me with a constant stream of jokes. You and made, I go to sleep. You made a great point during the break <laughs> when we were just uh, yeah, chick-chatting. You said you like being surprised by Yeah, things. that's the best thing you can do Fuck yeah. is to find a- entertainment or humor or, or intrigue in, some, in a location of people's minds that they haven't found it before. And it goes back to that poker scene you did, which Jim Norton's in and all the guys where you guys are just busting each other's yeah, balls. Yeah, it starts as just... A, and also, because it was early in the season, I liked that people would be... I mean, I'm aware of where people... The context of an episode now, mm-hmm. from having done... Lucky Louie taught me a lot as far as, like, just coming on TV all of a sudden. Sure. And what that means. So I knew people would be like... They'd start watching the poker scene thinking, oh, okay, so we're going to once in a while see Louie and his buddies playing poker. This is an introduction. And they banter... And they make gay jokes because that's just what fellas are like. And then the show, that episode just stumbles into this fucked up territory. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're not laughing and you're watching this guy talk about this thing. And then I make a joke in the middle of it, which is really inappropriate. <laughs> and so it's no, wait a minute, am I supposed to be laughing at this or not? Right. And then it goes away. The episode isn't even about that. And we never saw that group of guys you know, again. I fucking hate you. Cause you, I'll tell you why. Because you just explained what I thought. Like, okay, the poker... Yeah, but hate's not the way to deal with uh, it. No, I hate Louie. Uh, <laughs> but I thought you were going to keep going back. That would be a central thing of your show. Right. Absolutely. You, I, I bought into that. Like, okay, they're going to be doing poker every once in a while. Right. To just kind of have a little fun and yeah, beat each other never again. Up. And it never happened again. No, you, you, no. you surprised me with that. We might in season two have another poker game. I don't know. Right. I don't know. But you didn't have to go there again. No, I didn't have to. And, it, and again... Other if, shows would have. Other shows would have made... Show because well, there were some lines that were missing. <laughs> Every show would have done it. Definitely, you should have done something like we were playing cards, and someone should have said, "Liquor in the front, poker in the back," and just give you a little finger like that. A little finger on the side. Yeah, a little joke. That would have been good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll come back and do that. <laughs> no, and and we didn't come back to it. And other shows would have been pressured by a network to. Do we love the poker Please guys. Please do more poker, right? Let's hear. Yeah, that's what, what Eddie Brill has to say this week. Maybe he gets sad. Yeah. Oh, they would. And then, and not only would they do that. poker, but every episode, we'll every poker scene would start with guys razzing each other and then getting serious. It yeah. would have happened yeah, over and over. Again same exact point. way. Yes. Oh, oh right. God, they just know how to unfunny yeah. shit up. There was that, uh, originally a second scene to the poker thing, and we we shot it, and I didn't use it. Uh, which is that at the end, it was going to be kind of bookends. That at the end of the episode, I'm on stage. Because I used to do the bits about the word faggot, cunt, and nigger. Like, that was my chunk of inappropriate words bits that I did then. Inappropriate? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh. A little bit. <laughs> and so I do the, the the poker thing to address the word faggot. And then you see me on stage doing my bit about nigger and the end, people saying N-word instead of nigger and that stuff. And then Hannibal Bress, who's in the poker scene, the black comedian, comes up to me and goes, Hey, man, you know... I see you banished faggot from your act, but you got nigger going strong. What's up with that? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't mean it. That was like, yeah, no, I get it. But, uh, you know, I hear Rick say all this stuff. Do I have to now explain to you what nigger means? Does that, you know, and I'm like, geez, come on, man. And he's like, I'm just saying, if you're going to say nigger, say faggot. I mean, it's not fair. So we actually, <laughs> oh, that's good. We actually <laughs> shot it and then didn't use it. Because the sound was shitty and just didn't oh really work. yeah otherwise I probably would have kept it. how great Technical that the network lets you say nigger and faggot though is in the right context it's just great that they don't fucking bother yeah. you well they so they nice. the, the standards person at FX is really smart and she she calls me whenever we you know that actually that poker scene was much dirtier at one point really and John Langraff the FX president called me and said um, that he loved the scene and that he wanted to put it early. 
in the run so that it would get reviewed and it would be part of what people would notice about the show. He said, but it's too dirty. He said, it's dir- if you want to keep it as dirty as it is, we have to bury it like 12 episodes deep. Wow. Because it's so, it was so, just come, every other word, come, come, <laughs> suck cock come, up come, the come. ass, eat dicks, come. <laughs> and he said, if you can tone it, he said, if you can tone it down in just the amount of times you use those words, then I, we, we, and he said, but it's totally your choice. He said, I think it's worth it because then that, that episode will get, that's a weighty scene and it's worth mm-hmm. doing. So I went through it to see if I could cut it down without hurting it. And I cut out like this, this part where where I go, uh, where where I say, how come you have to wear shoes at the club? And Rick says, because uh, the floor gets full of cum. <laughs> and Nick DiPaolo goes, all right, we get it. And so I cut him. I manufactured a cutoff where Rick goes, well, the floor gets full of, all right. And he cuts him off and doesn't uh, let him uh, say it. Right, right. I manufactured that in the editing, and I realized, you know what? This is actually making the scene better. Sure. That Nick gets nervous enough about, the stuff that he th- stops it from yeah, being said. Yeah. And I used that way of cutting it down. I didn't have to cut out as much as I thought I would. And I showed it to Langraf and he said, we can do that. And I'm so glad we did because that episode it partly is uh, is the reason the show got notoriety. And, and that scene's gone viral for you. Yeah, and I had I got, the show. I, I, there's this a, a web, website for gay people called AfterElton.com. It's a very big oh, gay Jesus. website. <laughs> and yeah. they called me up. This guy called me up and said, well, I don't, I don't understand how this seen talking about gay people came from a straight guy. He's like, and he wanted to know how a Uh-oh. straight person <laughs> oh, ends wow. up with this Uh-oh. point of view. Oh, well, maybe I'm gay. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't sucked Uh-oh. a dick yet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, if I'm a closet gay, let me find out soon. <laughs> I'm almost fucking 50. Now, uh, <laughs> get, it out, get it out in the open so I can start taking advantage. But uh, FX How is, awesome would that be to all of a sudden open your fucking horizons? At, by, you at know, 50, just go, ah, fuck it. To go, oh, oh my god. Why not? There's twice as many people like him <laughs> fucking. Well, why not? Just Apparently Apparently that's exactly what was tweeted on my fucking Twitter yesterday. Yeah, what, it said for the new year I'm uh, I'm gonna try buy so I could double my um, choice out there yeah. because I had left my uh, my iPad out and Keith the cop was over the house and decided to tweet really as me. Is that what you're saying? Or, yeah, 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 that's, that's your, exactly what it was. Wow. Yeah, it said in the new year I resolved to be try buy. I mean, why not double double my odds? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's what he fucking does. Well, that's what a friend does. And sure. I had to put Jesus fucking Keith got my Twitter again. I'm not um, trying to be bi. I really need to sign out of Twitter when I'm asleep. Why did you need to dispel that, though? Yeah, you should just um, left it out there. What do you hurt? How are you hurt by that? Well, I'm so <laughs> homophobic that I and, and I'm so insecure about my own masculinity that I feel I have to do that. I don't know wow. why. Now that now that I'm reading it, I'm like, yeah, why the fuck did I feel compelled to do that? I think it's more of a I just want to like give a fuck you to Keith. Sure. More so than having to explain. I don't think I had to explain that I'm again, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, 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 nearing the the big five zero mark and mm-hmm. and just deciding I want to be by. <laughs> I don't think I really had to explain that. Uh, more so, it's oh mm-hmm. look, look at what asshole Keith did again. I remember I was did a show years ago with a guy named Tony V. Do you know Tony V? He's a comic from Boston. I don't know. Very funny guy. And we did the show. He's a really big guy, dressed as kind of like a biker, but he's also kind of weird. So he was wearing paisley boots, like colorful paisley boots, and then a biker jacket. And we were doing a show in Rhode Island, uh, and some guy yells out, it was at a college, and this kid yells out, faggot. (laughs) And Tony V, big burly guy, and goes, what? He goes, look at your boots, you faggot. And Tony goes, well, let's examine that for a second. What if I was a faggot? What if I was gay? And I decided I wanted to take you out back by my car and force you down over the hood of my car and fuck you in the ass. <laughs> if I had decided to do that, you know what you could do about it? Nothing. You, There's nothing you could do. I'm bigger than you. I'm smarter than you. I would just take you. And he goes, so you better pray I'm not a faggot. You better hope you're wrong, man. <laughs> Great way to handle it. Yeah, who cares uh, if somebody thinks yeah. you're gay? I really would, couldn't care less. If there was some way something came out that I was gay, I would never. I'm here to declare that these allegations I, are false. I just go, yeah, all right. Uh, I want to say that. Yeah, I who cares. And, and yes, honestly, I'm gay. I'm not making. I'm not backtracking because we, we make enough dick suck jokes in this place and <laughs> self-deprecating <laughs> homo jokes and stuff. But uh, I, I think it was more of a just oh fuck, look. 
asshole got my fucking Twitter account again and mm -hmm. did that. I never care what people think. You know, you make up a few tranny stories, people start to think that it's real. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Wacky uh, people. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sure they do. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of people that want to say hi to Louie. Now that you're a big star, Louie. Yeah. No. He's really famous. Yeah. yeah. I just keep looking at him. He's so famous. I've just kind of crossed over to a place where I'd have to go through infamy to get out now. Yeah. Like I'd have to do something <laughs> bad. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, Otherwise, it's going to be just be a, a, a half-life, like uranium. It'll be... I think we kind of... <laughs> yeah, no, the stick, truth is, the show... Away. I already see the road back down. This this year this season of the show, it, everyone says it's just not as good as the second. People uh, love to do. That. People love taking uh, shows with promise, uh, saying, "You know what? Wasn't as good." Sophomore jinx. Jo John Langreff gets fired. Third season, I'm off the air. Mm. Um, I go back on the road. I'm not as inspired as I've been in the past. I put out one shitty special, <laughs> oh, and man. it's over. I'm back at the Tempe Improv for Jesus. three thousand bucks a week. Look. This leads to I movies. already know the nah, it leads know to the, movies low. And I know I can't I can't handle the Tempe improv at three thousand a week at this no, point. So, so I don't have a good yourself. so I go back the next year and they're like, We don't even want you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm teaching That's college. Terrible. Maybe if I'm lucky, teaching college. You drive by all the theaters to get to the local comedy uh, club. <laughs> Remembering uh, the days when you're at the theater. And fucking, uh, you know, Daniel Tosh doesn't say hi to me when he walks by. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, hey, what's up? Hey. No, I'm not a fan. I'm actually a comic. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> no, Daniel, remember I used to know That's you. Fine. Okay, all right. Uh, Daniel can't talk to you right. No, I know him. No, I know Daniel Tosh. <laughs> I do. What's worse than the, that phony, like, hey, man, how you doing? Oh, ah, yeah. oh man. Really? <laughs> really? Oh, it's fucking really? horrible. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah, it's Jim. Jim, no, of course, Jim. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to go to the phones because a lot of people want to say hi to Louis C.K. Right. The big special is this Sunday at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Hilarious. And it will be available on DVD and CD Tuesday, January 11th. Let's say hi to Howard in Miami. Howard. Louie, love the show. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Hey, tell us about your Sarah Palin tweet. Yeah, you kind of talked about it earlier. Yeah, where you been? Sarah Palin, I just, yeah. yeah. I didn't hear I it. was just drunk, and I, she fascinates me. That's all. Yeah, That's it. That's you, know, you don't think she has a real shot, right? Uh, no, I think she no, could no. get nominated yeah. and uh, then lose. Yeah. Yeah. She has no shot at winning the presidency. No, I don't think no. so. She's not a good enough debater. And honestly, she's not. I don't think she's bright enough to play on that level. And I'm not shitting on her. But I just don't think I think she, she knows that, too. And she's just kind of enjoying the attention everyone gives her. Well, I yeah. I, I don't think she even believes in it. She's herself. smart enough that she's... Ca I don't think... Well, she didn't even want to be governor. Right. No. She didn't want to do it. She's doing a reality show now. Who gives a shit? Yeah. But, but she, I don't know. I, under the right circumstances, something weird could happen. I think? mean, I, I'm not saying that she's like I com I called her the new Hitler on Twitter once, and the person from FX said you can't compare her to a person who killed six million Jews, and I said, well, I'm not comparing her to that. I'm comparing her to like early Hitler. Early Hitler. Yeah, or, or the way that Hitler wrote. <laughs> there is a comparison. It doesn't mean she's going to end up killing the same amount of Jews. Early Hitler. The but first she's of seasons, starting so. out a very similar way, which is to be ex extremely inflammatory. Go to the right of the right wing, which is what mm -hmm. she'd attack the conservatives as not being conservative enough mm. and get create this reactionary fucked up party and take a few seats in the legislature and then take a few seats more. And I mean, this is what Hitler did. Hitler was elected to power. People forget that. Oh, yeah. They he them. was he took uh, the Reichstag in little pieces and then they started doing stuff like all of them would, wa would stand up and walk out during votes so that nothing could get done. Mm -hmm. And then he created a fake explosion and fire in the in the German capital and said it was terrorism. <laughs> and then based on that, they created emergency measures and then he got reelected re and then he made himself fewer. Yeah. She could do that. Fuhrer. It's easier to do with a parliamentary system like they have in Europe. Yeah, it's a little Pre rough. President is harder to take I think she, that way. Yeah, I think it's kind of tough. It's easier for uh, somebody to rise to power uh, in the presidency like uh, Castro or Obama yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have yes. to bash. Yes. I have to bash. Totally. I understand. The socialist. All right, let me I say. I understand. <laughs> Let's go to Jersey. Eddie. Hey, guys, good morning. Good First morning. First time caller. Love the show. Hi, Eddie. Listen, Louie, 
Yeah. Um, there's a scene you shot in one of the episodes at the airport. I wish you guys had played. It was one of the funniest things I've seen, and I'm, I'm 57, so I've been watching TV since you had to get up and change the channel. Mm. So, it's a long um, time, Eddie. Yeah, I know. But there's a you got the guy at the counter losing his mind, but he's just out of the shot. I think you can just see his wife. And watching your face cringe as the guy is screaming at the counter person, it was hysterically funny, and and you got to do more of that. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that happens all the time to me in airports and stuff. Somebody that's not in your world just fucking has a horrible moment, and you just get to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, the funny thing is, I just got stranded out in Wisconsin last weekend trying to get back. So, I mean, and I'm thinking about that episode, actually, as I'm standing there trying to make reason of why I can't get home, but... How long have you been well, flying, was, Eddie? Probably a long time, right? Oh, uh, since the Wright brothers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they invented the airplane, so that means a long time. Yeah, yeah, That's a long time. Jimmy, so. by, Jimmy, by the way, I want to thank you. You met my son, though, last time you were down at the Borgata. You treated him real nice. Oh. And he didn't even bother you for a picture, so thanks a lot, Jim. Oh, you're welcome, of course, man. And Jimmy's going to be back at the Borgata, right, Jimmy? The, uh, I know yeah. you're not promoting, but uh, the guy mentioned yeah. With Brewer, Attell, and uh, Burr. Yeah, the first two are sold. The third one has a few tickets available to Late Show Friday. That's great. We're all We're going Saturday. down there, too. That's great. Uh, I want to ask Louie about the Huckleberry Finn thing. What about Huckleberry they're, Finn? They're taking the N-word out of the book. Oh, yeah. There's a whole documentary about that that do PBS did. What? Uh, like you could probably get it on PBS or website or something. They did a whole documentary about Huck Finn. Uh-huh. And uh, that uh, nigger Jim is the name of the character. Right. And that once in a while, this happened. This is a cyclical thing. That's why everybody should see this documentary. Mm. That every once in a while, since the book was written, like Mark Twain, there's okay. actually a quote from him where, where he says, I knew that when I wrote Huck Finn, he would cause a lot of trouble and that he will throughout history. Like that every once in a while, people, someone... Fuck some fucking college student reads it and goes, that that's nigger or not? That's comes really like, offensive. Comes around like niggers and comic. starts a thing. <laughs> yes, some fucking nigger. Yeah. So they there's actually in the documentary there's a great moment where Reagan is uh, giving a Mark Twain the Mark Twain Award to somebody or something like that, <laughs> and he goes uh, he goes uh, and who can forget uh, Huck Finn and his great his great friend. Um, Jim. <laughs> and there's a moment where he looks to the side and you can tell there's an aide waving his arms around. No. Like, like he said to him 50 times, Mr. President, Don't when you give this award, say Jim, not, but it's nigger Jim. <laughs> I read it. I haven't read much, but it's nigger Jim. <laughs> Mr. President, you can't say nigger anymore. What? Why not? <laughs> why not? They don't like it. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. <laughs> okay, like so then, it, and then he it. was doing practicing for the teleprompter and his friend nigger Jim. Mr. President, please <laughs> don't say nigger. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's going to be the end for you. <laughs> oh, well, fine. Uh, Goodness shit. gracious, it's nigger Jim. That's the fellow's name. <laughs> then he started and so making then you it can worse. see, and he goes, and his friend uh, uh, Jim. <laughs> in the place yeah, of that's me. great. <laughs> it should say instead in the when they reprint it, um, Jim. Um, Every time it's supposed yeah. to say uh, nigger Jim. Um, Jim. Um, Jim. Um, Jim. Jim. Or, or they should just put fucking in front of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking black Jim. No, just fucking black Jim. fucking <laughs> fucking owned by another person face. Oh, in a different baby. font, so no, it really. It's the most, there's nothing out. more uh, ignorant. Uh, than thinking you're ridiculous. fixing anything. Thank you. By taking nigger Jim out of no. Huck Finn, but it was a fucking it's a it's a fucking monument to American history. This is what and the book is about a kid's struggle with the the what if if you've read Huck Finn, which I haven't. The point of it, <laughs> no, I read it at some point. But the point of it is that this kid Huckleberry Finn he has this friend. Yeah. Um Jim. Um Jim. Um, um, Jim. <laughs> Who's a slave. And he's his friend, and he grew up with him. And he wants, uh, nigger Jim wants him to help him um, to escape slavery. Mm -hmm. And the kid has been raised that that's wrong. That nigger Jim is a slave, and he belongs to somebody else, and to help right. him would be stealing, would be like corroborating with a theft to take away. That's what people were raised. And he has an internal struggle of, but I know him, he's a human being, and I don't know what to do about it. And to take away nigger out of the nigger Jim's name 
just fucking destroyed. It's like it's like pretending he wasn't a slave. Yeah, it would be like rewriting the story and just saying Jim was an employee of the Home Depot who wasn't paid much, <laughs> and he was thinking of getting another job. Uh, but Home Depot's really, you know, their contracts are really strict. <laughs> so Huck Finn had to help him right, so go to a job at Ikea. And that's, <laughs> no, he was a fucking slave who was whipped, and his name was Nigger Jim. That's how bad his life was. <laughs> yes, so if you take bad. Nigger out of Nigger Jim's name, you're softening the reality right. of, of what uh, of life was about. like then. Uh, right, and yeah. you're taking away what was great about Mark Twain's humor. Right. Is that he reduced the, the misery of not only black people, but of all poor people in the South. He took that context and made colorful, beautiful, uh, uh, funny, funny stories mm -hmm. inside of that kind of this barefoot kid who's fucking starving. It's, and he's a yeah. dynamic, interesting character. And his friend Nigger Jim has a voice. Nobody else was writing for Nigger Jim. It then. softens the, uh, the whole uh, conflict that the kid is feeling, too, by... Because then it's like, oh, it's just Jim. Yeah, it's Who just cares? his friend Jim. No, this oh. guy's bad, life is so bad that he actually has to say, hi, my name is Nigger Jim. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, he actually has to answer <laughs> right. to Nigger Jim. Yeah. But now it's Slave Jim, and eventually they'll get yeah. rid of Slave. Yeah. How about this? Would it be make acceptable it, uh, they call Servant or something else. Yeah, exactly. How about Jim the you-know-what. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> and eventually it'll just be... How about Black Jim? Like, people just Jim. say it people, uh, people at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah just black uh, Jim. black guy. You know Black, black Jim? Jim. Yeah. But, but who is uh, offended by this? Because I, I spent a lot of time on Twitter. Cause just this was niggers. A... <laughs> <laughs> no. I, 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 I wanted to send you no. off there. Perfect. Uh, no, I, I don't know. But, it's, but I, 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 it's usually I, white people. But yep. You know what? I, I was on Twitter a lot yesterday looking at this because it was a trending topic. No one yep. was offended that was commenting on it. Black no. people weren't offended. White people weren't offended. Uh, it, equally, people were like, why are they doing this? Yep. I thought it was financial. My take was because this book company is doing it. But and then they're, they're out of touch because I think every time I think that's a very shrewd, Jim. I think that every time they do a new edition of Huck Finn, they go roll out the fucking nigger thing to get it out out on the store, you know, yeah. to get these sell so sell some books. And they're very afraid possible. people might not buy it with nigger, and especially the climate now. So like, we want to sell books, change it like that, and maybe schools that aren't buying it will buy it. I think it's a financial. Oh yeah, no, uh, putting nigger in a book just uh, shuts down sales. But, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but, well, I mean, just schools, colleges, and schools. No, I know, but but Twitter is huge. And I'm telling you, I didn't see one person go, well, that's, they should take it out. They were all like, what the fuck is well, this about? Well, who's talking about taking it out now? The publisher? Is they talking yeah, about the taking it out? The publisher is new, taking it the, out. The New South. With, without, the without really giving a reason. I haven't seen a reason yet why they're uh, taking no, it out. No, it's really... They said it was, it was actually based on one guy complaining one and talking about it that whenever he had to talk about the book... As yeah, he was you get teaching, that. He did the um, Jim. How <laughs> fucking important is that? And you should say nigger Jim when you talk ab yes! about the book. You should, That's if right. you're talking to uh, to sixth graders about it, you should say nigger Jim every time. You should never say Jim without nigger. In, in any life. context, sports, yeah, nigger Jim. <laughs> on this Actors. show in the morning when <laughs> yeah. I say hi in the morning. Oh, yeah, that's... Anthony with nigger Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's that's your new name, Jim. Nigger Jimmy Norton. <laughs> <laughs> Little nigger Jimmy Norton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, Lou, you got a show on FX. Uh, <laughs> You're going to get an No, FX, but you shouldn't. Uh, that's how, that's how you, if you untie those two. You're doing a real fucking damage. Yeah, that's, I agree. It, it's it is not softening. Completely agree. Completely. And they'll continue softening it. They yep. won't. They won't stop by yeah. uh, 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 with just naming him Slave Jim. They, no, they'll move on from there. Yeah. Hey, uh, a quote from Mark Twain about censorship. Censorship is telling a man he can't have a steak just because a baby can't chew it. That's very, very Mark Twain of him. That is Twain. Can you, you find man, Mark Twain about Huck wow. Finn? Because he said you'd find Mark Twain talking about That's Huck great. Finn. Yeah, I want to. I, I would love to know. And if actually, if you wow. also YouTube around and see if you can find that Ron Reagan clip, because I swear to God, it's what I. You I know, um, it always ends up being something I didn't. Um, know. What a um, great uh, quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, huh? yeah what that a is. Fucking. That's a good one. Censorship is telling a man he can't have steak because a baby can't chew it. Right. That is fucking we, genius. We uh, sacrifice. I said this years ago. Our own, uh, our own entertainment because we got to protect the children. Yeah, the children. But what I happens also what about our a, entertainment? A baby is also about uh, other adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Metaphorically that, as well. Definitely used a, as a yeah, this metaphor. A, absolutely. Wow. For asshole children. What I'm thinking. I never read that. I, I don't read Mark Twain. I've never read him. Oh, I mean, Jimmy. Uh, I'm just not. Yeah, I'm neither just, do I. Wow, that's a great quote. 
Yeah. That stopped me in my tracks. And I'm, I'm hard to do. As everybody says, no one doesn't stop in their tracks like Norton. That's what the word <laughs> on the street is. Word Pe on the street. People who think other people have different impressions of them than they do. <laughs> well, everybody's like, people always know. I don't fuck around. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Shark off. Nobody knows. <laughs> and in, in other news, it's official, according to CSA Dick. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers have offered that homeless guy. The uh, the job of announcing at the announcing fucking, at the fucking Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, Cleveland games. needs wow. something. Yeah, that guy is poor guy have a, though. A really good job. See, he turns it down because he doesn't want to live in Cleveland. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, maybe he wants to go somewhere warmer. Well, that too, Chip. <laughs> Just ruins your brilliant joke. Oh fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, what are we doing? We're looking up the clip. I was trying, trying to find, to find it. Yeah. clip. That's going to be a hard thing to find. I'm going yes. to. It was a PBS yeah. documentary. I'm going to watch that today. Yeah. Can I watch it on YouTube? <laughs> Netflix? It's, it's, kind, it's right. kind of difficult to find, actually. <laughs> How about Netflix? Later, I will. Uh, I got to look. I got to look. Well, when I did a preliminary search, it what's, wasn't really what, yielding a lot besides VHS. Called, What's that? What's the special called? The documentary? I don't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it for you. Hang on. Someone can help me out and let me know. That's all right. Sometimes we snap. I don't. I don't. It is called Culture Shock. Uh, Born to Trouble Adventures of Huck Finn. Fuck That's the name hey. of it, but it's kind of awesome. hard to find. Because it's, it's, it's 10 years Finn. old already. Right. I'll see. So, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised right. YouTube doesn't have a. This I know, I just, I just list. It, it might be on there, but not under that title anyway. Right, right. Keep is it on Netflix, Dan? I need to look for it because Please. I'm doing something else. Let me, let me say hi to Jerry in Maine. Uh, Jerry! Hey, boys, how are you? Uh, pretty good, buddy. All right. Louis, uh, it's a great show, and uh, 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 you know what? Hold on one second. Uh -oh. we, we will go back to you in a sec. Uh, Kyle like in California is a black guy, very me. angry. Kyle, what's up? Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hi, Kyle. How you doing? I'm Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't hear you. laughs> He's laughing. Right. Um, <laughs> what's up, Kyle? I, I just want—I want to say I, I love the show, right? Like mm -hmm. you guys, like for cheese. If a truth is there, you guys are used like your fucking nigga quota this morning. Like, this shit is ridiculous. Louis, I love your show, too. My wife and I watch it all the time. Genius. But her, who made the point saying that to take out the word nigga Jim out of, uh, takes away from the story? I, I, I didn't catch who caught that. No, it's not... It would take away from well, it would take away from the story, but it also take it would take away the 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 historical context of it. It would take it, it would be sanitizing. It would Kyle, be, let him finish. He makes it, a good point. It, it would be sanitizing history in a way that it that that in the end is bad for black people. I think. Wait, he was a slave. Yeah, I know. So how does taking the word that that. And highly offensive word, mind you. Because he wasn't no, just no. a slave, he was called Nigger Jim. Everything it, about his life. That's how horrid was. it was. It takes away from the horror of what this guy's life was. And also, Kyle, wait, 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 let me ask you something. Guys, when you guys, read something, guys. when you read something, you should be hit with a visceral reaction. Like, Slave Jim, it, it's a horrible thing to be a slave, but that doesn't give you a visceral reaction. When you no, read no, Nigger... No, no, Jim, if you knew anything about... What slavery was really entailed, it doesn't matter what you call it. You have one minute left on your phone card. <laughs> you have one minute listen, left on your Kyle, phone card. Kyle, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm let me ask up. you a question. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> because we've said what we think about it. Um, if you want to add something, right. what would be accomplished by taking nigger Jim out of the book? I think the fact, and, and I, I agree with you on censorship, it's diluting our society, and the, that quote that he had saying, "If you take steak away from a man, it's like you're, you're stopping a baby from eating." Kyle, what? Kyle, <laughs> what would be accomplished? Did you take him off? No, no. no he's what off would here. be accomplished? What positive would come out of taking Nigger Jim out of a book uh, uh, like Huck Finn? The positive that I feel would be accomplished would it would set a standard as far as what acceptable in our society and 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 I, I i agree with you as far as censorship but it's not about censorship it's about telling somebody said it was part of a great part of american history right that that book stems from a great part of american history it's part of american history right. that was a very dark and and disgusting Time in our history. So should we? So should so we? Let's make believe it didn't should happen. we go back and change what it was really like? Right. Is that? I, I mean, is that even I fucking? You know. I don't think it should be subject to 
celebrated. Kyle, should, should we go back and read? Should we redub? Uh, it's not being celebrated. It's being illumi motherfucking nated. <laughs> Grow the fuck up, man. Should roots be edited uh, a certain should, way? Should we re? Should we redub Schindler's List and everywhere that they say Juden say respectfully Jews, no problem with them, but let's go ahead and kill them. <laughs> but let's not go and call them Juden. I knew you would bring that point up with as far as how the Jews were treated. <laughs> Even the Japanese in World War II would call them chinks and whatever you call them, flat faces, who knows? I understand your <laughs> Dude, should roots be should roots be redone with the word nigger removed? No. Why? Because th that mm. Alright, I'm nailed. You got you got me. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Kyle. Right. Seriously, that takes balls to admit you're wrong. Yeah, no one does that. I'm done with you're that. Right. All right. Oh you know what? Thank you, Kyle. Sorry, Go home and get your fucking Thank shine you. box. Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> hey, Lo. You think <laughs> Frank Vincent quotes? Jesus. Listen, he said it. We just, didn't say just it. Just a question, because it goes back to the 9-11 stuff and all. You think slavery was bad for everybody that was a slave? <laughs> that was, oh. oh, that was a slave? That was a slave. Do you think like one guy? Do you was think there were, cool? I'm just asking the question. I think there were some slaves that went, "Holy fuck, this is a pretty good damn well, life." Well, it, it was. It was no, because you just you can't choose it. You can't make a choice. That's the essential to his human went, happiness. Some guys right. had better experiences. Had some I'm the ones that worked in the house. That's I'm where that some people comes from, found yeah. happiness inside was of lives of slaves. Was everybody happy that slavery, you slavery be, was abolished? You would still or, be the burden. Or did some people go, "Fuck, I had it actually pretty easy doing what I was doing." And now, when I learned American history. Uh, back when I was in junior high school, because that's as far as my education really got. <laughs> I was in high school, but I didn't learn anything there. Um, there well, life got very suddenly difficult uh, for people after they were freed. Uh, their life, some of them, their lives were simpler, and then some of them, some of them, their lives got more difficult. But I, I don't. I think if you had asked them, they would have wanted. They would have said, "Life is hard now, but I'd rather that than be a slave." I, th right. I would say most people. I'm just but there's the always question. well, it's, are you always going to have some that that'll like take yeah, they're going to go. Uh, like, you know, really? that, it's certainly yeah, life was easier than it's like I prison. can think that there about a people... lot of times in my life that were worse but easier. There are people in I, prison that don't want to sure. ever get out of prison. So yeah. you know, also, by the way, the those people, thing. the slaves that were freed, took a hit for the rest of the for every generation after them. They had the hardest job, which was to transition to. A free life and mm -hmm. they had they suffered for it because mm -hmm. nobody because suddenly they're just they go from being slaves somebody who at least the whites would protect them just because they're their property just based mm -hmm. on you know you know <laughs> with the same protection of like stay off my lawn <laughs> stop hitting my slave <laughs> and then suddenly they become just their neighbor who they hate Right, and who right. they'll do any? Who they just because they're so bored of being poor that they just take it out on black sure. people. So yeah, I think that it was. There was probably black people that were bitter. Mm. I, I'm talking totally out of my ass. It's not my experience, but I'm speculating. If I was to but, speculate, yeah. I was to say, obviously, I would say, obviously, there were people awful, like this. But, fuck, I think I would. I wouldn't be left with like I shouldn't have been freed. I would have been left with white people really stink because first they <laughs> fucking capture you own you and then they let you go and beat the shit out of you till you die i really am not fond of whites that would have been my that prevailing been feeling <laughs> for anybody at that time you sure not freedom stinks but white people aren't f fun in any capacity mm. they're not being fun and nice no they're not being fun and nice i think if slaves were kind of given some that would have been, i love Sorry. No, no, no. That guy's not really nice. It's like this. There's a Gary Larson cartoon of hell, and there's two guys sitting in the corner of hell waiting to get like tortured, and one guy's whispering to the other guy, "I hate this place." <laughs> <laughs> place sort of off. Me. <laughs> it's not for me. I'm not into this. <laughs> so I suppose there's black people that were like that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's put. Um... A terrible uh, burden on the country in many, many ways over many, many years. You know, like K you. Kyle's call though is is an like you know he's a black guy. He's fucking doesn't like the word nigger. Fair enough, but it's like that that reaction, that initial just get her, get her, that anger about it. It's like when you break it down logically, it's like you're, it shouldn't be taken out yeah, yeah. to be pleasant or to be polite. 
You can't change something that makes you realize how horrible something, something. was. You should right. read that and feel unpleasant about it. Yeah, that's what yeah. Mark Twain was Also, it's for. what he wrote. It's what right. Mark Twain wrote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave Regardless, shit alone. it's what he wrote. It's what he wrote. He was, he was, it's a, it's a, it's a insight into his mind and yeah. Yeah. He, even if he wrote it for a nefarious reason, it's what he mm -hmm. wrote. Either, either don't print the book or well, print it. Or don't buy it for schools if you don't think kids yeah, should read it. Yeah, whatever. Go have them read another book. What are they going to read? Harry Potter book Birth of a Nation. Yeah, no, it makes you know, no let's, sense. Let's re -add. It's funny, though. That. It's true. People are so excited to get offended and to clack it on the keyboard and make that phone call that they don't think about it. Mm -hmm. They don't think about it. And you give him one simple uh, argument. What, right. should you take it out of roots? No, but... Oh, yeah, that's and right. Like, why? Why should oh, you? Oh, yeah. That well, that's why my nickname is... Oh, sorry. Oh, what? I was going to say, saying? my nickname is the Slippery Slope Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I really know how to bring up Slippery Slopes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why that's why you got to fight it, because then you start here, they, they just continue. And they exactly. Edit, they edit everything. Every that's right. Every movie we know, every book we know. You can't History edit... History in general, they, they would love to edit. You can't edit unpleasant things. Right. They, 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 they're there. They're there. Don't watch them or don't read them. I mean, it's why I wear a shirt that says, hey, the knob has an on and off switch. Uh, you know? uh, this guy, you gotta love that. This guy's got some insight on the guy that's doing this. Uh, Daniel in Oklahoma, you know a little more than we do, hopefully. Yeah. I, uh, I read Welcome aboard, Dan. Thanks, Jim. I read an interview uh, with the guy, no, and it's just one guy. This was not exactly. like a, a publisher's decision. It wasn't like a board of people who decided to do this. It was one guy, he's a Mark Twain scholar, I guess, as much as you could be. Right. And then he goes around and he, like, does presentations at schools about the books and stuff. And he found that a lot of teachers are afraid to assign the book as reading because of that word. So what he did, he rewrote the book because it's like, a, what, a public domain, so everybody can publish it. And at the beginning of the book, there's a several-page forward that explains that this has been censored. And it basically says, anytime the nigger, I'm going to put slave. Like, you basically know that up front. But it's just did it so that teachers can assign the book and kids can learn it and, and want it. And, then and it's a fucking it shame. Thing. It's a fucking it shame is. because shame kids should not, know. You know. It's it, not a conspiracy and it's not, he doesn't feel guilty about I it. I believe it is. I, I, uh, no, it isn't a conspiracy. It's just a bad decision. And it's, and it's, of it has, course it is. and it has an impact because kids that are going to read the book aren't going to know what history was like. They're not going to know how bad things were. They're also not going to know. Well, how the story works. They're not going to understand the 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 irony, almost uh, the dichotomy, or other words I don't know real know exactly what they mean of this, <laughs> of this kid having a friend who he calls Nigger Jim, and he can, he has affection for him, yeah, and actually is thinking about turning him in. <laughs> yeah. He's actually thinking, well, if uh, you know, I mean, I was taught my the golden rule: turn niggers in when they run away. Like that's what that's what it was that's to grow was, up in yeah. that time. Yeah. Come on, nigger Jim, you're my pal. What a crazy sentence that is. <laughs> Leave it the fuck alone. Yeah. Let kids deal with that. Not only the reality of how hard things were for black people, but that were there were friendships that included moments like saying, nigger Jim, you're my best friend or whatever. I don't know the book well enough to come up with, but there's probably some, you know, you know, like there was a movie about Hitler that came out a few years ago with John Cusack, where he knows he's a friend of young Hitler when he was an artist. And he, uh, and he says to him, fun Hitler. And he says to him at one point, "Oh, Hitler, let me buy you a lemonade." That's a quote from the movie. Hitler, let me buy you a lemonade. <laughs> what a crazy <laughs> thing! But it's a, it's a valuable thing for people to know that Hitler was once a, some art student that somebody took sympathy on and bought him a lemonade to yeah. cheer him up. Who knew he liked Did he lemonade? drink it? Did he accept the lemonade? He accepted the lemonade and said. I'm going to kill every Jew. Yeah. <laughs> Did he see the lemonade and go, wow, this would make great dye for numbers? <laughs> it really started the ball rolling. <laughs> see, because they were yellow. Go ahead, right, sir. You didn't ask for orange juice. Huh? Uh, I didn't hear you, sir. We talked over you. I apologize. I was trying to do a chip. I'm sorry. Jim. Oh, that's oh, all right. You're gone. Thank you. I actually oh. didn't hear that one. Yeah. I don't know. Louis, uh, you like Bad. that your kids go to public schools? Yeah, I do. I think public school is an important part of Are they... how things work. Are they learning when they work. proper things, you think? No, but they're, they got, you know, it's good they're getting a bad education to get. At no, the, I, we, they, we have a particularly good public school yeah. in our neighborhood because we have wealthier people mm -hmm. in our neighborhood. But they, you seen mm -hmm. that PC shit, though? Fact. What's that? The PC shit? No. No, it's, it's a Merry, pretty... It's Merry Christmas at that school? Um, 
still? I'm trying to remember if then Christmas we had Christmas stuff up. I don't know. Who, I don't care about that. I don't believe that that's the fucking battleground. <laughs> the, the happy holidays. Bill O'Reilly. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Shit. There's no. Oh, yeah, well, we're we a, defending Santa Claus and you're a Jesus. You're pinhead then. Yeah, apparently I'm a <laughs> pinhead. A pinhead and not a on his face. I don't think it makes any difference. Is that <laughs> cheesy? When they say Merry Christmas in school, it's just as cheesy as when they say Happy Holidays to all everyone. Sure. I don't care. Okay. But the kids' education is. I think it's really a huge part of why America grew well, even though it's now dying poorly. A horrible death. That. Uh, <laughs> People would all throw into this one school, and, the, and wherever you live, that's where you went, you know. And that it was paid for by paid for by a collective, mm -hmm. and uh, kids in your neighborhood and teachers in your neighborhood all interacted. Rather than this idea that you're select a school is being paid for and selecting children, mm -hmm. you get all these things like fake diversity in private schools, where private schools um, brag that they have a certain amount of you know just enough black people. Just, just enough, enough diversity, yeah, to not to say bother we're you, diverse. to make everyone comfortable. Yeah, but public schools are just very ad hoc. They're very imperfect, and they're yes, very, they're, they're good. What's ad hoc mean? Ad hoc means kind of put together without a plan. I think. Yeah, it's okay. like an ad hoc. Committee. Sounds right. Yeah, there's lump, you know, layers of lumpy paint. There's not really a, you know, you and you can't... can get the shit beat out of you by the diverse crowd in in yeah. public school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you do your, you just do your best in a public school, and it's it's got the depth that you can go in. You know, if you're a kid that's really curious you can learn otherwise you might be ignored you could think sort of up to you learn more about like real life and how to function in yeah. you know, society but it's terrible that there are places where there is no good public school i mean there's neighborhoods in america where there is no accredited school where there, literally there is no school yeah there's a lot like in lowell mass i think it was, my friend of mine is a doctor and he bought a, a mansion in Lawrence, Massachusetts, because okay. it cost him fifteen dollars, <laughs> and uh, he started living there and opened a clinic, and then he learned that there was no school. Literally, oh, really? the public schools were so bad that they lost accreditation. That if you if you graduated from the local school, they you couldn't go to college. <laughs> it didn't matter. You just went and no, it totally because they didn't have enough money to keep the schools going. There was no private school, so literally those kids were just that had weren't wow. growing up illiterate. Wow, that's fucked up. And it should be, I think, fixed through public school. I don't mm -hmm. believe in all this charter shit and private school vouchers. I don't personally believe it. That's just my belief, though. I, know I, I went a to a great... Tax. I know that, and I don't have no kids. What's that? <laughs> I ain't got no kids, but yeah. I pay a lot of school tax. Yes, you do. Yeah. So enjoy yes, your education, you kids. It's so, I guess it's so, you know, they're not yes. throwing shit at my house. Of That's a, all it is. Yeah. It's keeping the dirty folks in this keeping building. Keeping nice schools, because if you have right. nice schools, then it keeps nice people in your neighborhood. That's right. So it's pretty much I'm paying extortion money to, to keep, keep the, neighborhood right. nice. the bad people <laughs> out of my neighborhood. They get you That's coming right. and going, Ant, right? How many times have we said right. that? Uh, right, right in the pocketbook. Uh, they hit you right in the pocketbook, Jim. Running out of show, one more phone call for Louis C.K. because it's a good one. Melissa, get, what do you got for Louis? Oh, you saved the best for last. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Hi, Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> Why are you laughing at? I have been married for 10 years, and um, just recently... <laughs> I started really changing my viewpoint on that, and uh -huh. um, listening to the show has been a big help, and Louis, you has. in particular, oh, have really um, led me in the right direction, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to thank you. So, so you, do what, you got out of a, uh, a bad marriage? She's or, trying not to say yeah. what she's... Yeah. Got, okay. Good. Because of Louis C.K.? Pretty much, more or less, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> there you go, Lo. You're helping people. Well, what, what was wrong with the marriage that you had to get out of it? Um... It just wasn't working. Yeah. Um, right. I don't. I don't want to get too specific. Oh, yeah, no, 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 vague. Keep it vague. Do you have kids? <laughs> That's what I do. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, you have kids? It's been, no, and that. that oh, so you know, fucking cares. Yeah. Exactly. He well, who cares? Ass. Did he ever hit you? Some ass. Did he ever hit you? <laughs> Was it physically abusive? No. What do you do wrong? What are you, the Kramer versus Kramer lawyer? <laughs> Did he hit you at all? Was he an, alco was he an alcoholic? Yeah. Did he blow his money? Did he? Well, then I can see why you left him next witness. Uh, I don't want to put blame on You want the kid, don't you? What makes a woman cheating. a better parent simply by virtue of her sex? There's a great line from Kramer versus Kramer. Infidelity. Oh, the virtue of her sex. I don't Inf know who that was. Infidelity. Dustin Jerry Hoffman. Seinfeld. That was good. Um... No, uh, yeah, marriages are, yeah, are sometimes they just stink. Every fucking day stinks. And then you stop talking about it because it's so bad that the only, you can't communicate because the only communication would be, honey, I'm not feeling so good about us. I know because every day sucks and we should split up. That's a hard thing to say out loud. 
Uh, but there's nothing, you know, it's natural. Why should things, well, nothing is going to just keep going except for Opie's marriage. Other than that, there, there's, <laughs> it really there's is no a happy marriage. Think, I really think marriages well, I, should I, be I, finite. I really think they should, you should sign like a five year, 10 year contract. Oh, yeah. Depending on your, you re up. You should be re up after that. Yeah. Getting married. Hmm. Well, that's like when you, if you were to like do a 10 year, five year. Yeah. I love you. I want to marry you for ten years, yeah. and then around nine years, you start talking about. Do you want to keep re doing this? You want to keep re up? Well, then you could say, "I'm not." Here's why I'm not crazy about re upping. You could actually say it. Yeah, if you're yeah. nine years deep into a forever relationship, you can't even talk about the problems because there's no. so much at stake. But if you're at not year nine, you'd be like, "Okay, here's what I hate about you. If you could change forty percent of these, I would hang in for another." Two five, years. Ten, five years, and then, and then the no, other person I goes, change. "I don't want to change this. I don't want to change." What a this. brilliant idea! Well, because we're talking about changing marriage to be civil unions anyway, to be a kind civil union. By the way, is a prenuptial agreement. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, a prenuptial agreement is a civil union. It's a court-based civil. So you write those out. I wonder. And then every it. marriage will become. Wow. I know. Every marriage will <laughs> become. Mouthy. Exactly. The men are talking. <laughs> yeah, why don't you go grab some coffee exactly. for the boys? Why don't I make <laughs> some <laughs> cookies? I want to smell cookie dough wafting out of the kitchen. <laughs> and you yeah, waddle around in your apron <laughs> while the men talk. <laughs> and fucking drag your cunt into the fucking kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> make no, listen. Cookies. I'm glad you got out of there. It's not. <laughs> I'm only kidding, madam. Oh, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of pressure on married people to stay together by people that have no stake in it. Yeah, you no, know, you got to right. stay hang in there. Well, you're not, you don't live in my fucking house, you know. So right. you don't know the misery. No, and if you don't have kids, I don't even care. I mean, if you don't have kids, you just you broke up with your boyfriend. You're dating, right? Yeah, who gives a fuck? Is it's it? meaningless. There's no. You just it does deep. become different when, when you become a father. Holy yeah, that's shit, it, man. Totally different. Well, in world. any event, thank you. Louis. All right, Melissa, I, I sure. Go Bye, find Melissa. Yourself. Yeah. Good luck to you. With that, we got to thank Louis C.K. It was great catching up with Louis, man. Always. Thank you, fellas. He's really famous. Yes, he is. Oh, very famous now. Oh my God, no, it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm at the White House. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's what you know. When I tweeted the the the, the Sarah Palin cunt tweets, <laughs> the thought I had up there in the sky was, I'll never. I've put a glass ceiling on my career. Mm. I just uh, put a glass you, ceiling. You'll never be the guy. At I the will White never House. be at the White House correspondence. No. Like that's the that's like the heavyweight champion of the world. That's what every great comic gets Once. to eventually is roasting the president. Yeah. And and in in the White House, and somebody will vet me for that. At some point, just because I'm one of the, you know, I'm on, I'm on a list, a short list of comedians in the world. I don't know how short the list is, at least twenty or so, and if you who are alive and working, and if you tick down that list, you get to my name. Go ahead, click, click Google. Nah, oh. let's not invite <laughs> that problem. Comments. That's going to be let's a problem. Sarah Palin's retard making cunt. I don't think we That's want. That's going to be a problem. Steer to, clear of this one. To give the, you know, Chris or whatever the fucking people at Fox News are. Yeah, we don't want to. Uh, right. Barack Obama apparently thought it would be funny to have this guy who <laughs> Len, said Len that Beck. Sarah Palin's son was a retard. <laughs> <laughs> now, if a Republican comic had said something like that, they'd yeah. have hung him out to dry. They really would have done a number on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do love the hypocrisy there. Fuck it, Lou. You, you rule. All right. What Thanks, do we got to do? We got to make sure people see Hilarious. It's going to be on Comedy Central Sunday night at 10 p.m., and then the DVD slash CD will be available Tuesday for Hilarious. Yes, and Louie will come back on FX in June. Can't fucking wait, Louie. New episodes. We can't wait for that. And Jimmy, you good? All I got is uh, Cap City in Austin. Uh, you're do I've never done Austin, Texas. I'm doing that for Great. the first time in a few weeks. Great club. And uh, and the, the, the late show at the Borgata, we have uh, a few tickets available for the 15th late show, and that's it. Okay. And, uh, Paul's good. We're going to go to break with another uh, taste of hilarious.